Welcome to San Diego, California and Pachanga Arena for San Diego Strike Force football. It is week number 13 here of the regular season in the IFL and the Strike Force welcoming uh, a formidable opponent in the Arizona Rattlers to town. Here's Steve Quist alongside Paul Rudy, the sports director at KUSI. Welcome to your maiden voyage broadcast of uh, Strike Force football. We're so glad to have you here. Steve, it's good to be working with you again. I feel a little bit like Fre uh, Fred Willard and... Uh Best in show. Best in show. I'll try not. To, <laughs> I'll try not to reduce this uh, broadcast to anything lower than <laughs> anything lower than that. Okay. Hey, we have a great crowd though here tonight. It's hometown superhero night, and by far our best crowd of any one of the uh, the previous uh, six or uh, five home games that we've had, and one more home game to come at the end of the year. Every uh, crowd seems to be a little bit bigger. I, I mean, I, I think you want to measure yourself against what is the best. The, you know, the New England Patriots of this league, uh, this is where you see how far you have to go. The first two games would indicate there's uh, there's a long road to be traveled, but at least you get a measuring stick, right? About ready for the coin toss here. And uh, the young Miss preteen and uh, some Miss teens as well here for San Diego County will come out and will uh, be part of the coin toss here with our head official, Chris Wiggins. So this is the final game of week 13 here. In the IFL, it's about to kick off, and the Rattlers start the evening a perfect 9-0. They're on top of the IFL standings. Now, Iowa did win earlier today to get to 10-1, so the Barnstormers, also the class of the IFL right now, are 10-1, sitting at a half game back out of first place. Meantime, Burt Grossman's strike force team is 1-9 and, and still a, a work in progress as we get deeper into the season. As you look at the two organizations, you can just see the differences. Uh, the, Arizona's been around forever. They come out. They're very disciplined in their pregame, the strike force. Sure. I, I think of Coach uh, John. You know, remember when Tampa Bay Buccaneers were coming into the NFL? It was yeah. pretty loosey goosey, and uh, the, their roster is stable. The strike force roster, I think there are five guys still on, still on the team from week one, so it's in flux. And all that change, it's, that's all a factor of time and, and reps, and we'll just see how that works out over a period of time. Right now, I think you have to be pr pragmatic. Strike Force are just trying to keep this one close tonight. Now you just saw the particulars on the game. You have 9-0 and against 1-9. and nine. And, of course, this Arizona team, as we had mentioned, on top of the standings at 9-0. and oh. And here's the tail of the tape. And as you look at that, what stands out for you right now, Paul Rudy? Well, the fact that uh, Arizona is, is better than San Diego in just about every category, significantly better. The only one that they're not is passing offense, and that might be a factor of just when you're behind a lot, you have to throw the ball more, and, and when games get out of uh, reach, defenses get a little more uh, relaxed, and so that perhaps you can pile up a few additional yards there. Uh, I, I would say that the, the odds makers would be heavily would, <laughs> Would, would what made. is the line, by the way, on this one? Did I you think, check? Well, I mean, going by the, the Caliente previous, line. <laughs> going by the previous two encounters, I would say this is a four-touchdown game. You know, if you keep within four touchdowns, you've done well. Well, you know, that's a good point because it's the third meeting of the season between these two teams. The first time that they met, 91-58 at Arizona in favor of the Rattlers. And then a little more respectable about 14, 15 days later on the 22nd of April here inside Pachanga Arena. I was at that one. 52-14 was the final score. Uh, San Diego didn't score much, but uh, their defense was a little bit better. Yeah, and, and you know, I'll, I'm, I'll just be put my cards on the table. I'm not, you know, I'm filling in here for John Contreras, so I, 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 I'm more of a fan for this game than I am a, an analyst. But the way I see it, the way the rule book is designed, and this is an, this is not, this is like watching the NBA. You're, you're, if you're not ringing the bell, then you're not doing your job because the, the, all the rules and everything is favored to a high-scoring offense. And that's where uh, sometimes San Diego, they just can't keep up offensively. So we'll see if they can do better than 14 points here on yeah. this uh, Sunday night against the class of the league, the Rattlers. Ball is teed up by Jimmy Camacho. He lays into it, and Marquise Rogers has it five yards deep in his end zone. Brings it out on the left side, skips past a tackle, tries to get past a second. And the starting field position will be Good. midfield. Devontae Merriweather pushed him into the wall on the far sideline. So one of the things we heard while we were down preparing for this on the field was the fact that the Rattlers, their big nose guard that they had 
for their first nine games has moved on to the NFL, and that might change the dynamic of uh, their defense. Uh, so the, he, um, I think, joined the Cleveland Browns for OTAs. He did. Number 33 is, Connor Flagle. Uh, is taking over for him in the middle. We'll see how that works out for Arizona. So they start at midfield. Jihad Vircher in as the quarterback, and on the dive, he's going to keep it himself. And get to the 14-yard line of the Rattlers and a great offensive play. Look at that. They know the nose guard's out. What do they do? They attack first, the middle. First thing they do is go right at him. One of the better rushing quarterbacks in the league is Jihad Vircher. Enough for a first down, and the ball will be placed at the Arizona Rattlers 13-yard line. There's a lot more energy in the building here tonight on hometown. I'm, I'm going to say there's, a, there's significantly more fans here than we're accustomed to seeing. Maybe that's just a factor of having the best team in the league. In. Yeah, there's a lot of Rattler fans yeah. who've come over. Virtue, quick throw Ooh. right, and connects there. And For a short game. Merriweather, Julian Stafford makes the grab. Stafford was... Kicked out of the last game for two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties in the loss to Tucson. That was two Thursdays ago. So the strike force have not played a game since taking on Tucson two Thursdays ago. They've had an extra weekend off to prepare. Pass was complete, bringing up a second down. Rodgers is split out wide left. Now they'll send Carson and Stafford in motion to the left. And Vircher keeps and puts his head down and gets down to the four-yard line, awfully that, close to another first down. That read option play now they've run twice, both times successfully, both times for 10-yard gains. And that will, in fact, be a first down. It brings up a first down and goal from the three-yard line. And we've actually got a camera guy on the field now. I can tell you, man. We're stepping up every week. Every week it gets a little bit better. It's you know, listen, This team had to get up and running in a very quick fashion. Yep. I think we'll, we'll see remarkable improvement in year two. First down and goal from the Arizona three-yard line. It's Carson moving left, and then Carson has his progress stopped for a loss back at the four-yard line. Yeah, that play fooled nobody. Nope, and it didn't fool Flagel, and it certainly didn't fool Nicholas Diavanzo. He's out of the University of New Mexico, had some time in camp with the uh, your favorite team, the NFL Vikings. You remember uh, Divazio? <laughs> no, you know what? No. But I, I didn't get quite. <laughs> I didn't get quite deep into that part, portion of the <laughs> roster, but but I'll keep an eye out. I mean, let's face it. All these kids are playing for you know they want to keep the dream alive, right? Yep. From the five-yard line, it's third down now. Vercher with the pressure coming up the middle. Fire oh! for Carter in the back of the end zone, and it's incomplete. In double coverage there, Alan Chapman was in there along with Merriweather. You know, in, in this game, in the, in the indoor game, the, the red zone, is, it's, I mean, it starts as a confined space, and as you get closer to your uh, to pay dirt, if you will, it gets very congested. Well, on the board it says fourth down. They have oh, it's third. third now at the five, according yeah. to the officials, but up on our board fourth. So we'll call it um, first and three and a half. <laughs> or third, I'm sorry, <laughs> third three and, uh, three and a half and goal to go. Yeah. Vircher fires for the end oh! zone, and is it caught? No, no incomplete. Just out of, out of our reach there as far as that. Terrific coverage there. It was in Phillip his hands, though. Henry. Catchable ball. Yep, he's out of South Carolina State, and now that brings up fourth down and goal from back of the five-yard line. Boy, this would this would be a big stop for the Rattlers. And I, you know, I don't know if you're quite how familiar are you with the game, but really, in order to win, the recipe is you just need to make one stop per half. Yeah, I it's mean, almost like tennis, right? Breaking yeah, serve. Yeah, that's that's a good equivalent. Yeah. I mean, it's not. It's all about the offense. Fourth and goal from the five-yard line. Vircher well protected. Fires catch. Stafford touchdown. Timing route. That ball was released before uh, the receiver even hit the break towards the uh, sideline. Vircher connecting with Stafford on fourth and goal for his first touchdown throw of the night. And it's 6 nothing. And the best part of that is it's going to run about five minutes of clock off uh, here in the first quarter. That kind of uh, that kind of timing route is almost impossible to defend. Ernesto Lacayo now. He's been pretty terrific this year in extra points. He was 6 for 6 two Thursdays ago against Tucson. Up. It's good. And what do you know? The strike force on the board first. I can't imagine that they've had a lead against the Rattlers at all this year. Again, let's 
revisit a 91-58 drubbing at the hands of the Rattlers on the 6th of April, and then they come back on the 22nd of April here in this building, only score 14, so they're halfway to that total. Give up 52, they lose 52-14, but they're able to score here and almost run, as mentioned, five minutes off that clock. You know, Fred, uh, when you think about it, Arizona probably comes in here because of those numbers that you're quoting. You know, they're, they're probably coming in here expecting San Diego to roll over and play dead. This will be an eye-opening, uh, an eye-opener for them to have the San Diego strike force move down the field and score that quickly, that efficiently. San Diego's defense was pretty good against Tucson uh, two Thursdays ago, as we mentioned, in that loss, and they've since upgraded as well. You might recall in that game, Ralph Harvey Jr., a linebacker, made his uh, first start and first appearance as a strike force player. They've also added another big, nasty at linebacker, Robert Caldwell Jr., out of North Carolina State, who was uh, on a, the Browns roster for a little while, so perhaps perhaps they'll have enough troops here to, to maybe make this a game against Arizona. And you know that speaks to the Strike Force roster as it sits that a guy can be signed off the street and be in the starting lineup. That gives you an idea of what they're trying to. You know they're going to flush through a lot of players before they settle on their their dynasty roster. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, they're honoring military here tonight as well. We talked about hometown superheroes, and that, that's perfect. It's not like Superman retired to San Diego. Your hometown <laughs> superheroes are oh, your first responders, your first military man. guys, and we, we saw a Navy uh, young gentleman there honored. This is a Navy town, for those of you who don't know. I do. When I think of hometown superheroes, I think of Michael Turco. <laughs> we talked about that. Oh, yeah, or John Coleman. John Coleman. <laughs> guys that you could put a cape on that really... And help save the community. Back deep to receive this football will be Robert Lewis. He's out of Washington State for the Rattlers. He's deep. He wears number 12. And Lakaio will kick it off from his goal line. Almost five minutes has gone by. The strike force strike first against Arizona and lead it 7-0. <laughs> After this, a bye before rounding out the final three games against teams that are all in the playoff discussion. Remember the top Six teams in the conference move on to the 16 playoffs. Strike force electing to keep the ball on the ground. Lewis. They kick off. Lewis taking it out of the end zone. And Lewis That's gets a great tackle. The five. And guess who that is? Ralph Harvey Jr. Three phases of the game. If you can win two of them, you're going to win the game. Ralph Harvey Jr. had 15 tackles in his debut for the strike force against Tucson two Thursdays ago. That was the second most tackles in a game this year in the IFL. Coach Grossman opting to keep the ball on the ground, squib it up the field. Little different look for San Diego's defense too up front. Jackson Dallas unable to make the game here due to a prior commitment and instead they're gonna move from the center spot to the nose tackle spot Shakur Phillip, and this will be just his second game. They signed him from Tucson. And Arizona starting on the ground with a run and the first carry of the game for Lolly. I bet you could count on one hand how many times Arizona start with the ball inside their own five-yard line. Yeah, and, and wind up running it as yeah, well. Yeah. Jabri Lolly, the running back for Arizona. A little pitch play stuff for a three-yard game. Yep, and Lolly normally averages five and a half yards per game. 54 rushes now for 295 yards. Starting at quarterback for Arizona is Drew Powell. He's a soft, long and softball and oh. overthrows By Gerard Harrington, yep, who's out of Campbellsville University. That's one of those shot on goals that they like to take from time to time. Arizona's always been famous when Danny White was their head coach and they were in the AFL. Because even though that play was unsuccessful in the stat book, watch the strike force defensive backs now give about two extra yards of cushion and perhaps give up the first down yeah. in front of them on this play. Jared Harrington is the leading receiver for Arizona coming in. 38 catches, 452 yards. Brings up third down and long now. Powell with the pressure coming. Eludes it, takes off, has the first down to midfield. Gets a tremendous block. 
And he's in for the touchdown. That was Lolly, the running back, laying a great block downfield and a rushing touchdown for Powell, and Arizona's within a point. And we have a flag on the, on the play. Flag after the play. Something after the play. A thing of beauty there for Drew Powell. And the, rush the result of the play the is a touchdown. The the after the, the play, right. unsportsmanlike conduct, number nine of the offense, visiting team putting the ball into the stands. That penalty will be placed in the bank. That's the first unsportsmanlike penalty of the game for number nine. All right, so an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty placed in the bank against Drew Powell for excessive celebration. And likely it'll come off on the, uh, be marched off here on the ensuing kickoff. So, so I mean, there's a difference. It's a game of inches. That could have been a sack, could have been a turn the ball over on downs type of thing. Instead, you get the back breaking long scramble for, for a touchdown. They almost got to Powell, and it would have been extraordinary because their the strike force only have two, two sacks in the history of the franchise as they play now in their 11th game. We had one last week, and uh, Terrence Fulham had the other one earlier in the season. So they've got to do a better job of getting to the quarterback. And when they got there, they just couldn't bring down Powell. It comes, it's almost a playground situation. Sometimes the, the kid with the ball is better than when the kid with the tackle, trying to make the tackle. Right. And you're covering deep, a lot of open water for Powell to run with, and he made the most of it. That was a pretty quick drive for Arizona, just three plays, and they march it from the five into the end zone. Powell with the rushing touchdown. 7.58 to go, and a, well, they only took about two and a half minutes off the clock there. And Jimmy Camacho out of Fresno State University will kick this thing off. And Marquise Rogers, who leads the IFL in all-purpose yards with 1,597. About ready to return this one. He had a pretty good return up to midfield last time. Shorter kick. Takes it right at the goal line. To the 10. And gets met at the 12 and driven back. Man, that guy's a beast out there. Philip Henry out of South Carolina State. Another stop. Merriweather as well. All right, a little more real estate in front of the strike force here and maybe an opportunity to take another five The unsportsmanlike so penalty against here. number nine is now enforced. First down, San Diego. If you want stops, you got to get one, and neither team has been able to get a stop. And by the way, I talked about real estate, but they're going to march that bank penalty off now 15 yards. So Once the starting field position improves. Starts in the uh, Rattler territory. So they've liked that read option play and they've liked that double motion to the wide side of the field. We'll see if they keep doing that on their second possession here. Yep. Let's see if they give it to Morera. Looking for him out of the backfield. Oh. Nope. Throw and interception in the end zone. Vircher doesn't throw too many of them. And Alan Chapman, he's going to take it out. Chapman to the 10. And Chapman is down to the 14-yard line. Shakur Phillip making the stop. And... Defensively, Arizona gets that key thing that we talked about, a, a defensive stop. And there you go. Uh, that was just a mis miscommunication. The receiver broke off the route short, and uh, Jihad threw deep to the corner. By the time he let go of the ball, his receiver was heading for the sideline. Last it, time. Here we go. We're looking at it again right here. Well, I guess not. We're looking at the big screen up here. <laughs> and it was, he was expected to down and up. Last time the strike force played against Tucson was, as we mentioned, two Thursdays ago on the ninth. They lost 65-48. Now that's, what, uh, a little bit under, not, not quite 20 points. But in that game, they had three key turnovers, which Tucson turned into points. So the Sugar Skulls had 21 points off of three Arizona turnovers in that game. There's a flag on the play. We'll have to see what uh, the, that's about as animated as Coach Grossman and his staff get. They're upset with the ball. San Diego cannot challenge a judgment foul like hands to the face are holding. Therefore, there is no challenge. San Diego is not charged with a timeout. All right, San Diego was wanted to challenge, it sounded like Chris Wiggins saying, and since they couldn't challenge, 
There will be no charge timeout. All right, fans, let's make some noise for your San Diego strike force. So Arizona has it after sudden change. Back at their own 13-yard line of first down and 10. Powell remains at quarterback and a quick little throw here to the near boards and a catch made by Jamal Miles out of Arizona State University, a former CFL player with the Edmonton Eskimos. Strike force corners playing a little back now after, after being beat a couple times deep. Though incomplete, it makes you, it gets in your head. You give a little more cushion. But one guy lipping is Shakur Phillip, who is playing nose guard now. And Looks like he's moved to a defensive end position. They've got Bruce LaPepe now in at nose guard here. And on the zone read, a run straight ahead by Lolly out of Shepherd University. And Lolly has enough for a first down. You hear the LaPepe story beforehand. His offensive line coach here, James Kilmer, said he was shopping at like the chess king in the Mission Valley Mall and saw this big guy and said, do you play football? He said, yeah, I, I played at San Diego State. And he said, show up to practice tomorrow. <laughs> and before you know it, he's been on the roster for about five weeks. First and 10 from the 25 yard line. Two in motion to the right side and a, a little option play. Yep. And Powell calls his own number and is down to the 21 yard line. You know, Burke Grossman is walking with a limp. He said he was pass rushing during That's practice, right. trying to sh show the guys how to get a little more heat on the quarterback. He's now on the <laughs> DL for, as is uh, number 64 now lim limping off the field. But I saw that on your broadcast. He also admitted, though, that he still can school these guys, and they're 20 years younger than him. 20? 30? <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> Not sure what that says about his <laughs> roster currently right now. Coming up on five minutes to go here in this opening quarter, tied at seven. Second drive of the game here for Arizona. And they're coming off a, uh, a sudden change turnover, the interception. And look like the play clock expired. And it's a delay of game. You don't see too many. Delay of game. Offense, number nine, five yards, still second down. Here from Chris Wiggins there. You don't see too many of them in the, in the uh, indoor game. That backs the ball up now to the Arizona 24-yard line, their own 24, and it's second down at 11 here. You would think there wouldn't be any. With a coach on the field like that, what would be the, you know, like <laughs> exactly. in the NFL it happens all the time because it's just tough to communicate. A lot of energy in this building here, and one of the best crowds that we've had so far this year in what is the sixth of seven home games. Powell just oh, dumps it open. off, wide open. That's going to be a touchdown catch Lolly. He'll just walk into the end zone. I'd have to think that that was a blown assignment somewhere. And so Powell has now thrown for a touchdown here in this opening quarter after running for a long one, and it's 13-7 Arizona. I'm going to guess it was the new guy, Caldwell, that missed his man coming out of the backfield. Let's check this out. Oh, we can't quite see off the replay. Oh, now you get it right here. Well, we'll just have, I'm gonna guess it was Caldwell's guy. And Camacho on to add the extra point. The score is Arizona 14. And the Rattlers take their first lead of the game and those are seven points off of the Vircher interception. First points off of a turnover tonight, 3.53 to go here in the opening quarter. Well, that's disheartening. After that opening, uh, you take the scoring first. You have the moral victory, and then you have the big interception. Really, it's two defensive mistakes. It was the missed sack and, the, and then, the, then the turnover. So two plays. And again, they're, they're mixing and matching a lot of pieces on defense. And there's some weeks where we come here, and well, every single week that we've come here, there's been sort of a new addition, and it, and it takes a while. And then, of course, the Arizona Rattlers are one of the most storied franchises in the indoor game, for goodness sakes, coming over from the Arena League before it kind of condensed down to, you know, four teams that are playing up in the Northeast. So that way it's good to see, see how they do things, how they warm up. 
how they, what offenses and defenses they run. Those are the things it's good to experience because what you do, yeah. like in any business, is when someone's doing something better, you copy That's right. it. One of the interesting wrinkles with Arizona is the fact that their head coach, Kevin Guy, who has guided them to a 9-0 start, also happens to own the Tucson franchise right down the road. The Sugar Skulls are off to a great start. They're in position to make it in the playoffs and without any problem. Don't they meet? Don't those two teams meet in the final three? I, I believe they meet at the, uh, they'll meet. So how does the league the second handle to last that? Uh, game of the season. I mean, how do you? <laughs> It takes a hard-hitting journalist like you to ask that question. <laughs> I'm a paid employee. I'm not asking that question. Well, I mean, okay. I get it, though. No, I mean, I mean, no, I mean the Strike Force are no different, right? I mean, right. they, they were. Yep, Strike Force and, and Cedar Rapids are owned by Roy Choi. They're on the on the back end of the spectrum when it comes to the standings. Neither are, are going to make the postseason. But Tucson in their first year is sitting right there in playoff spot number and if they five. need a win late and it doesn't cost arizona anything what's to keep exactly the, the rattlers from sitting down for a, for a week camacho rogers and rogers has it seven yards deep in the end zone brings it out left got a block without a penalty and then rogers gets brought down by Devonte merriweather who's been all over the field tonight all right, this will test your intestinal fortitude, how you respond after the turnover. Now suddenly, instead of being up by seven, you're down by seven. This is a gut check right here. Yep. Got to have a touchdown here on this drive. Sort of to reestablish serve, if you will, when we talk about the tennis analogies. Victor Dean from Lincoln High is in. Wearing number 84, he'll be a motion man here along with Julian Stafford. Dominique Carson is in at the running back to the right of Vercher, and Vercher quick little throw and connects there with Marquise Rogers, and he's up to the 21 again at two. The outdoor equivalent of a bubble screen there, two blockers in front of him, a little short hitch, try to make uh, t try to turn it into a catch and run situation. Rogers has been real solid for San Diego this year. Their leading receiver, that was his 50th catch of the year. Moriera is the leading rusher, and we have not seen him get a carry yet. A pitch here to Carson. He moves left, gets ahead of steam, and is brought down just shy of his own 24. Third down and five coming up. The Arizona defensive end did a nice job of stringing that play out, waiting for the Calvary to arrive. And you do run out of real estate really quickly when yep. you try to stretch the uh, the perimeter in this game. And that's so important with those three. When you only got three guys, man, they got to be able to move, right? Right. Laterally, side to side. Let's face it, the emphasis in this league is on speed. Speed yep. speed over size. Speed kills here. New center in for San Diego. Shakur Phillip playing both sides of the ball. There's a first down catch by Stafford. Merriweather pushes him into the wall to end the play, but a big first down there for San Diego. Those two have nice chemistry. I mean, that, again, anytime you're throwing the ball before the cut is made, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, here's the replay on this. And Bircher, still not the leading passer. Derek Bernard is still the leading passer for San Diego, but he hasn't been with the team now for about five weeks. Vercher took the snap off the turf and gets to the 16, a gain of two yards. The exchange there blew up that play before it had a chance. Connor Flagel is in on the stop, big number 33 there, replacing Arizona's nose guard who moved on to Cleveland. Tryout. Oh, make, I mean, that's what this league wants to publicize. Yeah. That you, you know, that you have a chance. The dream, the dream can be had. And that's big because we heard today the progression really is from here to the four-team AFL up in the Northwest. And then from there, perhaps. Well, you then you go to the AAF, yeah. which yeah. you know we know folded. But now, what to come from here to the NFL is amazing. Virtue off his back foot and throws uh, it. It's caught by a fan, but that'll be an incomplete pass. Number 43 with the pressure. Yep, Bircher took a big hit there from Ricky Wyatt Jr., who is second in the IFL with six sacks. He's out of Central Arkansas. That brings up a third down now. Got to get a touchdown here.
Empty backfield. Vercher, pressure coming up the middle. It got picked up. Carson with the catch, but. Picked up half of it. Yep. Then it'll bring up fourth and long here. And now you might bring out Lakayo to try the field goal. You might just go for it here. We'll see. Taylor Januser is the offensive coordinator. He's across from us and is going to think about this decision here. And he'll actually let the final seconds of the first quarter. Which way is the air conditioning blowing? <laughs> That's right. And that will be the end of the first quarter. Well, despite the interception, it was a good start for San Diego. They were able to connect on their opening drive to get a 7-0 lead here against Arizona. Then Powell for the Rattlers with a long touchdown run. Bircher threw that big pick, and Powell turned that into a touchdown throw to Lolly. Seven points off of turnovers, but I, I'd have to say that was a strong opening quarter for the strike force considering you know, one game earlier this season they gave up 91 points to Arizona. Yeah, I think you scored as a win. Two, so far, it's been a, it's been two plays that they want to take back. You, you, you come out of the, you'll start the second quarter facing about a fourth and five. What do you do? Do you kick the ball, I, I, or do you, or do you? At this point, you're just playing to win. And I, I think it looks to me like Bert Grossman's gonna go for it. Yeah, I would, I would think so. This is sort of the territory you could probably pick this up. It's about a fourth down and four. First set of uh, statistics coming our way. Hope you brought your glasses. Yes, I did. Jihad Vircher was 5 of 9, 23 yards, the touchdown and the big interception. And Drew Powell, 2 of 3, 31 yards, but uh, he ran 46 yards uh, on two carries. One of those 42 yards in that uh, touchdown to tie the game up. Right now, the, the, I guess what we expected to see is Arizona is running the ball a little bit better. They have nine more, nine more yards rushing, and I guess that would speak to what we're seeing here. Is that's where their advantage is. They're, they, they're kind of dominating the line of scrimmage. Devonte Merriweather for Arizona already has eight tackles in the opening quarter. We were talking about the fact that Ralph Harvey Jr. had 15 two Thursdays ago against Tucson, which is the second most in any game in the IFL this year, and Merriweather might blow that out of the water by the time we get to halftime. Big fourth down now. I think it's longer than, yeah, it's about what, fourth and six maybe? Yeah, I think it's about fourth and six from the 13. They got to get across the seven yard line. Vircher with the pressure coming up the middle, gets rid of it quickly. Out and is it caught? Head. It yep. is at the five yard line by Rogers for first down. They're bringing the heat up the middle, and it's basically, can you throw an accurate pass with somebody in your face? They're, they're, they're testing yep. Jahan, that way. And, he, and he's connected now six of 10 times here in the outset of this ball game. 14.35 to go here in quarter number two. They're bringing one more rusher than San Diego Strike Force have the block, and it just becomes a a time and space equation. Vircher to Carson, and oh, Carson escapes a tackle. The cutback, as you mentioned, for the touchdown. Nice cutback there. Takes Shifty about. little fella, huh? Now that play had no business being as successful as it was. <laughs> that young kid, just, uh, Arizona over pursued. He yep. shook one tackle. Jet sweep, if you will, and got away from Flagel, a couple of guys, and high steps it into the end zone. And they are Ernesto, Ernesto Lacayo, a point after away from tying this thing up. We were saying that was an intestinal fortitude check. <laughs> they, they passed. Lacayo to add the point after, and it's good. And we got a ball game yes. tied to 14. Yes, we do. 13.32 to go here in quarter number two. You're our good luck charm, and San Diego has just as many points against the Rattlers in this building as they did earlier this year when they lost to Arizona on the 22nd of April, 52 to 14. So, hey, marked improvement every week, right? We knew they that it was gonna be tough in year number one with the late start and all that, but I like to see this improvement. So now it's on. It's, Behooves the defense to come up big here. 
if they're serious about what would be scoring the biggest upset, <laughs> upset in sport, this would be the equivalent of Brooks Kepka not winning the PGA Championship. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, if there you if go. the strike for us were somehow to, able to win this ball game. And that almost happened. Yep. Yeah. This would be uh, Furman beating Alabama in week 14 of the uh, NCAA season. You know when the SEC always plays those one double A games? Yes. Like at the end Don't of November. Don't get me started on that, okay? <laughs> when you have to go to the internet to find out where the school is located. <laughs> exactly. You always, that's the first time I ever heard directional schools <laughs> which is when I started working with you. I love that term. Lakayo to kick this thing off. Now that the defense really needs to either get a takeaway or a stop again. They got the ball first on the kickoff to start and scored. But Looks like they're going to keep the ball on the ground again, Steve, here. It's almost teed up like it were going to be an onside kick. Mm. Yeah, if you want to get it on a bounce. Absolutely. And that's going to roll all the way into the end zone. And it's going to be taken out of the end zone by Robert Lewis. And Lewis gets run down by Omar Cook at midfield. It was not as successful as the first kick. So not bad starting field position right at midfield for the Rattlers who average 63 points per game. That's tops in the conference. Hey, am I crazy to say I almost rather have them start at midfield. They have too much open to water to work with yep. when they're back, on, say, inside their own 10. I like the I, I, You have less field to defend. Yep. It, it's, it's condensed, and, and somebody could make a mistake, right? You yeah, can you can't get beat it. as deep as easily. Yep. Clock rolls now to 13.20 to go. Powell back at quarterback. The southpaw fires incomplete. He was targeting Jamal Miles. In coverage was the linebacker Robert Caldwell Jr. Number 64 for the strike force. Uh, Philip or Sergio Phillips is playing on one leg. One uh, kid's playing uh, a gutsy stand on the field. As yeah, he is. He is. The, the kid out of San Diego State is 6'3", 265. He's been limping since the opening yeah, series. Notice, notice from him. He's limping worse than his coaches. Yep. <laughs> Powell, two for four now in the ball game for 31 yards and a touchdown. Inside play, fake, inside read. And he keeps it and sidesteps a man and has a first down to the 13-yard line of San Diego. All right, let me be Captain Obvious here. That Powell kid can play. And Captain Obvious is here on Hometown Superhero <laughs> Night, by the way. And he's in Section 5 with uh, the San Diego Enforcers. He reminds me a little bit of Steve McNair. You, you're yeah, he guy. does. Yeah. They have two very capable quarterbacks, too. Jeff uh, Ziemba out of Shepherd University is pretty good, too. They went out of center, under center this time, and it's Lolly. And Lolly picks up five yards on a first down run. I would assume these guys grind you out their second two in the IFL with 270 yards of total offense. And something you don't see very often, but a team rushing for over 100 yards in the indoor game. They rush for 110 a game. Like, you know, their offensive line just, just using the eyeball test. They're a little bigger, a little stronger, yeah. and they're, they're kind of pushing. The strike force defenders look a little bit like they're on roller skates. Holland. Garola and Maddie are up front. Powell has all the time, just kind of flings it up Ooh. and unable to grasp it is Miles. Omar Cook was closing on the coverage. A little touch pass to the back and Miles couldn't handle it. We need the boys in the truck to put a clock on his uh, pocket time because nobody is getting near him. E.J. Johnson as well of Rockford University in on the coverage with Cook. And it brings up a third down and five now. From just outside the strike force, five yard line. Two in motion right, Powell, plenty of time, no rush, throws for the goal line, and the catch will be made at the one by Harrington, the leading receiver for Arizona. They'll stop him, and it'll be first and goal from about the one foot line. I'm not sure Harrington had a catch. Uh, he did not in that first quarter play. He was their leading receiver coming in. That's his 39th catch of the season. At this rate, Powell will not have to have his uniform laundered after the game. Literally, nobody is getting within three yards of him on any passing play. 
Now Powell under center. Lewis in the backfield. First and goal from inside the one-yard lot of San Diego. Handoff Lewis bounces off his own man and into the end zone. Right at the back of Brandon Haskins, the 6'4", 310 lineman out of Tennessee State. And that just gave him a little extra yardage in which to cover. And a touchdown. All right, Steve. So uh, big number 99 there with the just contain the, the strike force defender just long enough for the opening to the perimeter. I, I guess there was a moral victory in there that, that they made him work for it. Camacho trying to bang home his third extra point. He's got a strong leg, and it's good. 21-14 Arizona. 9-25 on the clock here in quarter number two. One of the perks to this league is the fun that you have on extra points in any special team kick. The, the, the scrum in the uh, in the crowd for the free souvenirs. <laughs> it's really good. It's you worth, know what this league worth. has, though, and you and I have seen this before, and once I tell you what it is, you're going to remember who did it and where you saw it. But you can drop kick it in this game, by the way. So a, a two-point drop kick, extra point, and say you're down three points, you want to drop kick it for four points to win a ball game. You remember where you saw that? No, where did I see it? A, a diminutive quarterback for the Chargers, maybe when you and I were working together at KOSI. Doug did it in a game, Doug Flutie at Qualcomm Stadium. Probably oh, like 01, 02. Oh, that was 2002, was yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. He drop kicked. I've never. I haven't so seen who, it. Who's since. a drop kick specialist on the Well, I have not seen one yet. Um, but I've seen Lakayo working at it. I mean, there hasn't been a situation where you're going to want to do it. Right? the attempt. Yep. I mean, it's a pretty gutsy call, right? If you're down by three points and you got a chance to force an overtime or tie the game up, and you try and drop kick it. That's a lost art. Yeah. Tell you what, though, I know John Cantera probably knows. <laughs> right, and we wish John the best too. We understand he's taking the week off from our broadcast and from 93.7 to um, to have a procedure done. So we wish him the best, Coach Cantera. Nobody knows more about sports in San Diego than the coach, and no one's nicer about knowing it than Coach right. Cantera. Come on, show to kick it off. Again, San Diego is down seven points for. The second time here tonight. Carson takes it at the 10-yard line, and Merriweather's got another tackle, but Carson gets to his own 24-yard line. Merriweather's everywhere. Another kid from Captain Obvious. He can play. That's what you have to have, that defensive specialist guy that does wonderful things on the, special teams. The one guy who you have to account for offensively right. every play. Uh, defensively, it used to be their nose tackle. Now it's this uh, Merriweather kid. Now it, it looks like working the nose tackle spot is Baron Poole out of Troy University. He has uh, taken number 93. Vircher now to start this drive. Down seven inside of nine minutes to go. Clock running. Vircher with the pressure coming. Almost lost the ball and got tripped up for a loss of two yards. And it was Poole, who we just talked about, who tripped him up. Vircher has to be envious of, of Powell's pocket protection the the, the the difference that to me that is the difference in the game right now is one quarterback has all day to throw whereas J Jahid uh, is always from the second he gets the ball he's under, under the gun again a new center for San Diego Shakur Phillip moving over from defensive the nose guard spot to center taking Jackson Dallas's place for the week this one's dumped off first touch of the game for Moriera and he gets quickly dumped, and right there again is Poole for another tackle here on this drive, and another loss bringing up a long third down now. Victor Dean in the off. I'll tell you what, just looking at Victor, he looks like a stud athlete, right? I mean, he was a stud athlete, two-sport star over at Lincoln High, and he just looks the part. Went on to have a good career at uh, Fresno State. And he has a considerable height advantage. I wonder if that's something that, that they can tap into uh, right here. Yeah, when you get like in the red zone there, you know you want it, you can throw it up into double coverage easily to Dean. He's in motion with Stafford on the near sideline. Virtue with a pressure coming from the middle. Connects with Carson. Carson with some shifty footwork. Got popped and still is in for the touchdown. Absorbed the hit from Devin Cockrell and gets in for the score. Jahid did a nice job of looking off the defenders. 
And then we went back to the uh, si sideline there, found his man with a two-step advantage. And just like that, it's a tie, or we're, we're extra point away from the tie ball game. Boy, you know, I had said this with the coach when we were doing the game in Tucson. Carson reminds me of uh, another former Charger, Darren Sproles. Just making the great catch, absorbing the contact, getting in for a touchdown to make it a one-point game. That was just matching up a small, quick guy against a big, lumbering defender, and there was no contest from get the get-go. Lakayo now try his third extra point. He went six for six against Tucson earlier this month. And and another thing that made that play work, Steve, was the fact that he actually had a second or two to look off the defense without getting a, a hand in his face. So kudos to the offensive line for holding up there. And that offensive line, Zan Jones is one of the tackles wearing number 90. We talked about Shakur Phillip is in the middle there. And then Jonte Berry wearing number 72, another one of the tackles who's been working quite a bit uh, with his offensive line coach, James Kilmer, to get quicker, which is the, the most important thing, as you had mentioned, for the indoor game. If you're a lineman on either side of the ball, you got to be fast in this league. 6.37 to go. Well, I'll tell you what. This has been a highly entertaining outing. I knew I was going to have fun with you, Steve. But I didn't think I was going to have this much We fun. always do. We yeah. always do. Yeah. And this is by far the best crowd of the year. There's still one more home game to go. And that will be on the 7th of June. That's the final home game of the season against Nebraska. And all teams in the final four here that San Diego's playing, they're all in the discussion for making the, the playoffs. And you look at the standings here, and Iowa is now, they're 10-1. and one. They just won earlier today. Still, Arizona is at 9-0. and oh, But Sioux Falls, who the strike force have to go to in a couple of weeks, is in that third playoff spot. Green Bay lost today. So Tucson. they fall to 6-5. and five. Yep, Tucson is sitting there at 6-5, and five, right, in the fourth playoff spot. Nebraska is in the, a playoff spot here, and They'll be the final home game on the 7th of June, so perhaps San Diego could play spoiler in that game against the Nebraska Danger. Which, by the way, you have any idea where they play? The Nebraska? Where would you think they play? I have no like idea. Like Omaha, right? Yeah, like right. It's actually Grand Island in the middle of the state. Like so how do you get there? Population 100,000. I think Greyhound, maybe. Amtrak? It's just this <laughs> tiny little town. Amtrak. Maybe, huh? Yeah. Uh, Playing a little uh, Uncle Ned's Bar. <laughs> They're a really, really good team, so they'll be here. You know, that that kind of speaks to some of the discrepancies in this league and things that have to be kind of... Think about how the uh, how the game rate and the salaries, how much farther they stretch in places like Green Bay. Yeah. And then, you know, you have to live on the same stipend here in San Diego, and that that's uh, hard to do. Yeah, but think is. about the arena costs, what, what it costs the strike force to get this arena every uh, every home game. Yeah, I was looking at Grand Isle on uh, on Google Earth, and it, they have an arena, and it looks like a neat little community of 100,000 maybe, and I think that's where the league offices are as well. That was Harrington with a return to the 21-yard line, and that's where this drive starts. Again, the one thing that San Diego has not gotten in this game yet is that defensive stop, right? They haven't gotten a takeaway. If you can get one a half, yep. you have a good chance to win. And that's why Arizona right now has uh, got the momentum here, and they'll also get the ball back to start uh, the uh, third quarter of play. Wow, Lewis put his head down and absorbed the contact from Omar Cook and laid a blow on Cook and gets close to a first down. Lolly with a great run. Lolly gets the ball there on the read option play. The defense is so keyed on Powell right now that the defender went to get Powell and he gave the ball. That's why the read option is such an effective play. Look at that. One Cook. defender has to stop two guys. Lolly into Cook, enough for a first down. Lolly is the leading rusher for Arizona. 53 carries, 293 yards coming in. Five and a half yards per carry. That's a big number in this league. And 12 touchdowns. Tied at 21, coming up on five and a half minutes to go. Oh, what we wouldn't do for a strike force stop right here. Or a turnover. They're going to send out Robert Caldwell in coverage here. And he's going to cover Lolly, who's lined up on the right side here. Empty backfield, and Powell has had a, a productive game. 
from the 19-yard line on a first down and 10. Again, all day to throw, Steve. Yep, and connects for the first down at the seven-yard line. And that time it's uh, Jamal Mills uh, out of Arizona State University, the former Edmonton Eskimo. Uh, Miles, J Jamal Miles, I want to say Mills, Miles. If you could find one kid who could rush the, you know, it's a simplistic pass protection scheme. So it's really just three on three, one guy. If you could find one guy who could come around the perimeter, boy, that would make all the difference in your defense. Just to put some heat on the thrower, get him out of his uh, comfort zone. Armstrong and Harrington are wide left. Miles in motion right. Flag goes up and Powell runs right into the awaiting arms of Robert Caldwell Jr. But hold everything. Let's listen in on Chris Wiggins wearing the white hat. Going to tell us about this penalty most likely against Arizona. Just Illegal defense. Number 55 was not marrying a receiver inside the belt. The penalty's half the distance to the goal. Replay first down. All right, so it was actually against San Diego, and it was the guy we just called. The reason why uh, Caldwell was there to make that tackle was because <laughs> of uh, the illegal defense. He lined up wrong. He knew where the play was going, right? He just... So there are restrictions as to where uh, the, the defender can line up and can't, can and can't line up. Coming up on four and a half minutes to go, even at 21 here, second quarter. Steve Quist, Paul Rudy with you from Pachanga Arena. Powell Scru rolls out and fires back of the end zone, caught touchdown. And it's Dante Armstrong out of West Alabama. Strike force jumped offside, so the touchdown will stand. Penalty marker, we'll see whether or not it'll be declined or be a banked penalty, but the touchdown's gonna stand. Illegal defense. Number 32 came out of a stance prior to the snap. That penalty's declined. Result of the play, touchdown Arizona. So touchdown Arizona. Powell throws his second touchdown. And Camacho on to try the extra point. Armstrong's got his first TD grab. And right back out in front will the Rattlers 28 to 21 and Tucson still cannot get uh, make it San Diego still cannot get that stop that has been the difference it's simple as that I, mean, I, I don't even know how many third down situations they've had, had to face not many Powell's made it look pretty easy Ziemba is the leading passer for Arizona with 20 touchdowns, three interceptions. We haven't seen him yet in this football game. When you have an efficiency rating of 100% on third down, you know you're having a good yeah. night offensively. Like we said, it is so hard to get stops in this league that everyone is so precious, and really the formula is. Get and we one. saw that in the, in, the, in the first and the only win in franchise history against Cedar Rapids. There was a stop each half for San Diego and one takeaway to start the third quarter after Cedar Rapids got the ball in the kickoff. And that was enough to, to weather the fact that San Diego only kicked two field goals in the entire second half in the third quarter, didn't score in the fourth quarter, and still won. You know, uh, I'm, I'm thinking strike force management, at least is excited about the, an engaged crowd. Yep. There are a lot of Arizona fans here as well, but their money's green, right? Yeah, it still spends. <laughs> Rogers lost the handle on it. Now he's got to try and get it out of the end zone. And we'll get it out to the four. There's also a, a thing called a rouge as well, where if you don't get the ball out of the end zone, you get a point. We have not seen that yet through 11 games. This would be the games. strike force worst starting position of the night. But again, you made that argument earlier. This might not be a bad thing, right? You take a, a shot downfield, get a guy into open field. and I think that argument works better if you're an Arizona Rattler than it does if you're a strike force, just simply because of the amount of pressure their defense is able to put. Now, I will caution you, while we move really quickly, when we get to the one-minute warning, the final minute usually takes about... 30 minutes so why is that it just well you know it stops on everything right and here oh, there we go Oriera in the open field in space one man to beat the stiff arm and he's to the 10-yard line of Arizona 
I want to see the replay there. Somebody. Alan Chapman absorbed the stiff arm. What a great run by Moriera. Somebody who is responsible for contain did not contain. George Moreira Jr. Terrific run from his own five to the 10. A punishing run. 36 yard run. We saw Powell with a 42 yard run on the first quarter. It looked like the Rattlers just were, uh, the pass rush was coming upfield and they, they gave the ball inside the pass rush. Vercher on the jet sweep oh. to Carson and nope, he keeps it. Vercher keeps it himself and gets inside the 10 down of the eight. Carson took a big hit. We all thought he had the football. You know, Steve, if I'm uh, if I'm the strike force, I'm not in a hurry to score. I'd like to score somewhere inside a minute. Maybe it's a great point. And maybe just maybe the Rattlers will run out of time when they're coming back the other way. Now the you asked about why it, it slows down, right? Because you everybody use, usually saves their timeouts to the final minute, and Remember. you could get three or four scores in the final minute of the game, right? If you go back and forth with timeouts and then it stops on a first down make and the clock stops on an incomplete pass where it doesn't outside of a minute. Pressure comes up the middle. Vircher waits for it and flings it short. Looking for Carter in the end zone, but he underthrew it. And that pressure again in the middle coming big time from Ricky Wyatt Jr. Yeah, the 4-3 uh, is going to have to buy dinner for the uh, Vircher <laughs> after this game because those two are getting to know each other really close. Now he has six sacks. That's the second most in the IFL, but he doesn't have one today has not been able to bring Vircher down. Coming up on 90 seconds to go in this second quarter. This becomes a big possession after Arizona has one takeaway in the first half. Roger Stafford in motion right. Oh, no, beautiful and open play call. Touchdown. <laughs> Marrera Jr. They're within one again. That was something the offensive coordinator saw. I'm betting in film study because that they exploited this quite nicely, coming out of the backfield, releasing to the inside. He just got lost in the in the seat. This of the is the one minute warning. The one minute warning. Bircher has his third touchdown throw of the game. I think the man who was responsible for him was coming on the blitz right up the middle. And they just exploited the heat. High scoring affair here as we get to the one minute warning. Waiting for the Lacayo extra point attempt to draw this thing even at uh, 28. Kyle has not missed many extra points this season. He's got some deep field goals as well. Been a very reliable leg for the Strike Force in their inaugural season. And just like that. Well, I'll tell you what, Steve. This has been as much fun uh, as I've had here. Coach might Force. not get his job back here. Good luck. We no, beat Arizona yeah, well, Coach tonight. will always get his job back, but <laughs> maybe I'll just come and I'll, I'll sit here behind you guys. <laughs> there you go. So one minute warning now. Pick some Young kids on. You look at this one more time here. Virtue's third touchdown throw this first half. I think what they were doing there is they were making it look like he was going to pick up the pick up the blitzer, and then he peeled off to the open area, and and everybody else was downfield. That was just a well crafted play. Sometimes you have to rely on a little trickery, miscommunication. It has a playground feel to it. It's almost it go down by the Chevy, cut over by the fig tree. <laughs> Don't run into Uncle Buck's car. <laughs> yeah. Well played first half for the strike. I mean, the difference has just been that turnover, right? You, you think you don't turn that over, you convert, and it's 35-28 right now with Arizona getting the ball in the final minute. So you'd think maybe with a minute left on the clock that would be with the strike in the strike force's favor. But as you mentioned, all the timeouts get saved for the final minute. So Arizona, a minute is an, an eternity in this game. I'm going to mark down now. It's uh, 6.01 Pacific time. We'll see how long it takes before we can stop down for halftime. Both teams have all three of their timeouts. And test the Pachanga cuisine. <laughs> That's right. What is the halftime meal? I'll have to look. I hope Pizza Port's open today. I think with this big a crowd, it very well might be. 
One more chance to see the strike force on June the 7th. Nebraska Again, comes keeping here. the ball, low roller. This time, a much more effective kick. High bounce taken by Robert Lewis, and Lewis cutting into the open field. Omar Cook had a shot at him. Lewis, there is a penalty marker, and Lewis is in for the touchdown. But if the pen, is it the penalty uh, on strike force? And now there's a second penalty on some extracurricular activity. I'm guessing just by where the flags are located, we might have been offsides of the kickoff. This could be disastrous for the strike force. Well, I didn't see that coming, Steve. No, not at all. Lewis uh, with the return for a score, which would put the Rattlers back on up for the time being at 34-28. Here's uh, Chris Wiggins. Offside, kicking team number six. That penalty's declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 12 of the return team, visiting team member putting the ball in the stands. That foul will be placed in the bank. This is number 12's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. All right, so an offsides declined against uh, San Diego, and then Lewis uh, throwing the ball into the stands gets uh, an unsportsmanlike conduct. If he gets a second one, he'll he's, be disqualified he's, he's from the game. Saw that happen to two strike force players against Tucson two Thursdays ago. Camacho now, and so a little bit of the energy has come out of the building here. The Rattlers took them 11 seconds coming out of the one-minute warning. They now have um, a kick return for a score, and Arizona's back on top by seven. Well, I guess what we were saying as far yeah, yeah, let's face it, it's a three-phase game, and right now Arizona's winning at least two of those phases, drawing in the third, and that spells a seven-touch, seven-point lead going as we approach halftime. I guess the argument is that we could use the same argument. There's plenty of time for the strike force with the timeouts that they have to get the equalizing score before we go to the locker room. Yep, and you have the top return man in the IFL in Marquise Rogers back awaiting this kickoff from Camacho. It's coming here shortly. San Diego led it 7 0, got the opening kick, drove down field. Bertrand threw his first of three touchdown passes, connected with Stafford, and then the equalizer by Arizona made it 7 7. And then Bertrand threw that big kick midway through the first quarter that Powell turned into seven points to give Arizona a seven point lead, and we keep going back and forth. This is the fourth time tonight that Arizona's had a seven-point lead, but the good news is they've had no bigger than a seven-point lead. This might get into the stands. Let's see, Rodgers, nope, he's going to grab at the five-yard line, get ahead of steam, and he was ruled into the boards by the kicker, Camacho, up near the 23-yard line. Still a good starting field position, just shy of midfield with 44 seconds to go in half and plenty of timeouts. All, the bank all penalty against Arizona will now be enforced. Time First down, San Diego. Now, the key right now, and you know, you're gonna get the bank penalty as well, right, for the unsportsmanlike conduct on Lewis. So, five seconds come off the clock, and this is a return that gets you inside the 15 to the Arizona 14. So again, I mean, this actually works out nicely. The, well, if you take enough time off the clock, if, that's yes. the problem. If you get it under 20, score with under 20 seconds to play. Yeah, you, you probably want even closer to five, to be quite honest with you. Virtue takes it off the uh, turf, throws back touchdown. to the end zone. Caught touchdown, Rashad Ridley. Boy, I like Virtue because he's been pressured. He has every, real to, every reason to have happy feet. He stood, held his ground, found his man. It was just, again, playoff uh, uh, playground football. One guy beating another on a, a kind of a down and in out, double move play. Made the defense think the ball was going one way. Perfect strike for a strike force quarterback. Rashad Ridley out of the Sandy, I mean the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology has made this a one point game. Vircher has thrown four touchdowns here in he this was, first half. It was not bad coverage. That was just a, a nice catch and th a throw and catch. Lacayo. And we are even one more time. Man. All right. Now let's see if we can survive the kickoff. <laughs> That's right. We are tied for the fifth time here in this first half. 
Again, what I say, within a within a minute, you can score up to three touchdowns, right? We've seen, what, two touchdowns? Since, since you've in made the, that proclamation. In a minute, so we got one more to go. And by the way, both teams have all three of their timeouts left, so we still could be here another few minutes. This is the best the Strike Force have played this season. Their only win came on the 14th of April against Cedar Rapids. They won 40 to 34 in a low scoring game. That was that game in which they only had two field goals in the second half of play. He's smiling on me because I remember this silly stuff. Steve, you are I do a lot of it. I do a lot of film study. <laughs> well, you, uh, you, you do a lot of play-by-play -play work. You're one of the best in the industry, uh. so. But you have a, a steel trap for a mine. I don't have that much storage capacity <laughs> in, the, in the cloud. Oh. Lakayo is going to kick it off. All right, so now they're the, they're, they're going to stick with the ground ball kickoff uh, format. It worked initially. It has not worked recently. By the way, there are no punts in indoor football. And part of the reason why they do this, too, is to avoid the hanging scoreboard. <laughs> you don't want to hit that thing. And this thing will bounce, and Lewis is going to take it on another big hop. And Lewis oh, right geez. back up the middle. Oh, now but, there's I, two penalty markers, and I he's think run that might, down that's going to be a, a illegal block. Well, David Carter with the touchdown saving tackle, but I, I think this is going to be a push in the back. Yeah. EJ Johnson's sitting there, and he's he's talking now to Philip Henry and saying, you, you, you didn't get away with that one. Too rough. During the return, slot. holding, return team number 31, 10-yard penalty, first down, Arizona. All right, 10-yard penalty. And so instead of having the football in the red zone, march it all the way back to your own 10-yard line. you got three timeouts left for Arizona and 32 seconds remaining. All right, well, here we, here we go. It was, it was that block right there, 31. It is such a fun game. Affordable ticket prices. The, the last time I checked, the beer is pretty cold, too. And and, and uh, it's good family fun for the kids. So. <laughs> it is. Powell launches, connects at the 24 to Caldwell Miles to again. And Caldwell Jr., as you mentioned, newest addition in coverage with a tackle, but... Uh, timeout here by Arizona. They'll stop it with 24 seconds to go. They have it. Timeout. Arizona. You know what? First pet charge timeout of the half. Football, either indoor or outdoor, is clock management. If you're going to make the decision to make the call the timeout there, Coach Guy, what, I mean, they lost six seconds just by making the decision. Well, I think you know sometimes you want that too because you don't want to look how many scores we've seen in the last. So minute, you think right? that's strategic? Yeah, you don't. You know. You don't want to give the other team too much time. Because it's taken close to 10 minutes now to take 36 seconds off the clock. Oh, they're playing air guitar here in the crowd. No one, the strike force crowd a little slow to pick up with the, <laughs> there we go, there we go. You know, I love just coming to the sports ring to see all the concerts on the wall. Yeah, I know. It's and but there was one I couldn't recognize, and I was like, thank God Paul is not standing next to me right now. And I have to ask you who that was because you probably laugh. I think it was Rush, and I couldn't oh. remember the guitar player from Rush. Just about every significant act yeah. has, has appeared inside Petrango. And a lot of great sports. Uh, oh, boy, moments. wide open. Yep. That took all of four seconds. Powell connecting with Miles. And that reestablishes a six-point lead for the Rattlers. Somebody miss somebody. As we wait for the replay here. I'll tell you what, the middle of the field was left wide open. The defender there thought his man was in the flat, came forward to defend the flat, and left a wide open Rattler receiver right down the middle. That was either a great scheme or a mental breakdown. I have three touchdown throws now for Powell here in this opening half. And so we've had three touchdowns in 40 seconds in the final minute. Now you see why they don't stop the clock for the first for the first 14 minutes. <laughs> well, actually, it would be more than that. It's the first 29 minutes of, uh, of game action in the first half. 
All right. And that's really why no lead is safe. I mean, that's the that's the great equalizer is you could be down three touchdowns in the final minute. If you make a couple stops and get a takeaway, you could come back in a hurry. Well, now the uh, strike force has been successful answering back the last two times. Can they do it a third time? They have to now. Remember, Arizona's going to get the football first, too, to start the third and quarter. And you can't dare let it become a two-score game. Exactly. I mean, we've had five ties in the game. Arizona's been up five separate times by seven points. Camacho tees it up. He's kicking it deep. And Rodgers. Rodgers. He hits the hole well. And Rodgers still going. And Rodgers still on his feet. And they finally blow the play dead at the 23-yard line. That cost him six seconds. Yeah. The but it's, it's probably not that bad right now. Again, 10 seconds. You got a couple shots in the end zone. Actually, probably more like three shots in the end zone. You could also, you know, kick the field goal as time expires as well. They're well within Lakayo's range here. So it wouldn't be the end of the world to be down 42-38. The return game's all about hitting that crease with purpose. He did a nice job there. Well, it was only 14-7 Arizona after one quarter play. We've had a, an entertaining second quarter. Yeah, to say the least. An entertaining final 50 seconds here. Vercher empty backfield, and we've got a Arizona, timeout, Arizona. Arizona didn't like something I'm we out. saw there. Arizona, their second they charge timeout of the half. Wear you out. Just go you know what I think? Oh, okay, no, I thought they had, they were missing a player, but no, that's not the case. You were here for the opener. Remember when there wasn't even the benches across the way? Yes, the, were, the surface has improved considerably. There's the, no duct tape now. The general facility or the, the field perimeter has improved significantly. And I will assume that you will hear a lot more about the strike force in the off season. They'll, they'll well, I think that was the you know the kind of the reason uh, Burke Grossman was hired to be the head coach. He was a fan favorite when he played for the Chargers. He draws a, certainly a lot of media attention on KUSI and other TV yeah. stations. He, draw, he was working on 1090 a lot on Tuesdays. So he brings a certain amount of heat that will only grow yep. in the coming. And that's a shame that 1090 had to shut down too because obviously for those working there too, but it was great promotion Fall for this start. team. Yeah, I, I um, you know, you'll have to, like, I still don't understand that, how these, the station with the best ratings. But I guess that's a conversation for another day. Yeah, Encroachment. Yeah. Number 33 defense an making contact with the offense they, prior to know, the snap. Five yard penalty. Say. You think people are still first down. To lease that uh, transmitter well, for uh, the, you know, $120,000 a month? Both, uh, both industries are certainly under a great deal of uh, duress from the digital world. Ten seconds to go after the penalty. Better field position here. And San Diego will have it at the Arizona 23-yard line. First down and five. They still have three timeouts left. Vercher, plenty of time, but the clock is uh, running out on him. He throws, it. oh, 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 oh. and it's intercepted. Picked off right in the end zone. And that's the half And that's going to do it. Boy, when it's all said and done, Arizona winds up getting not one but two stops in the first half and will get the football first in the third quarter. So a lot of pressure on San Diego's defense coming out of the locker room. Yeah, now they're going to have to come up with a stop if they have, if they want to enter the time went to so during the play of an half time. They're now looking like they have to make two second half stops and just and judging how well the Arizona offense is playing that, that seems to be a tall order indeed. But then that's why we play the game, right? Yep. Now, when you're taking on the class of the IFL, who's sitting here at 9 and 0, what a respectable first half. Vircher with four touchdown throws, 42-35 in the strike force, are within striking distance when we return for the third quarter. So Paul and I will stop down, and uh, when we return in roughly 15 minutes or so, 
We'll have the start of the third quarter here at Pachanga Arena. It's first place Arizona 42 and the Strike Force 35. Fans, we'd like to welcome our friends from Crop Junior Theater. Here to showcase the upcoming spring musical production, Mary Poppins Jr. Be sure to attend their live performances May 24th to 26th. For more information, visit www.sd.croccenter.org. That's www.sd.croccenter.org. Mary Poppins Jr. features the Jack of All Trades, Bird, and introduces us to England in 1910 and the Troubled Banks family. Young Jane and Michael have sent Penny and Annie Packy before Mary Poppins arrives on their doorstep. Using a combination of magic and common sense, she must teach the family members how to value each other once again. Mary Poppins takes the children on many magical and memorable adventures, but Jane and Michael aren't the only ones upon whom she has a profound effect. Even grown-ups can learn a lesson or two from the nanny who advises that anything can happen if you let it.
Before coming to the crack center, I was not myself. I was scared to show people how I am because I thought they were not going to like me. We didn't have that much income to pay for um, classes or activities for our kids. Our life was just going to school, coming to the house, watching TV. When I came to the crack center, it changed me a little bit myself. When I heard about my scholarship, it brought a hope. All right, here we go. About ready to start the third quarter of play. Our apologies, we were at the uh, snack stand. Talking to a <laughs> pair of Lincoln High coaches here in San yeah, Diego. Right. Jason Carter was there. You get talking to those guys. Here's Lewis. He had a return in the final minute for a touchdown. And that time goes absolutely nowhere. Caldwell is in on the stop along with Omar Cook. And that was some of the uh, Strike Force's best coverage as it relates to special teams so far tonight. As we pick things up with the home team down seven, looking for their first defensive stop of the night. Uh, both of us a little out of breath. So <laughs> yeah, we yeah. apologize. We heard the uh, PA announcer say, <laughs> it's time. we're just so popular when we roam around. That's why they have us as announcers. Steve Quist, Paul Rudy with you. Paul, of course, the sports director at uh, KUSI and has a weekly visit from Bert Grossman, right? Uh, well, we try to make it weekly, but Bert, Bert is such, you know, his schedule is such that he cannot <laughs> commit to the media like that. Will you talk about things uh, from rushing to SWAT team standoffs yeah. in his neighborhood? Drew Paul having, a, having pretty much a pretty, the kind of night you want your quarterback to have. Yep. Here's Lolly, and Lolly, wow, Lolly put a shoulder into E.J. Johnson after he gained the first down. And a big pickup of about 15 yards for Lawley in the first half. Five rushes, 26 yards. Drew Powell was 7 of 10, Paul, in that uh, opening half. 94 yards and three touchdowns. Vercher, on the other hand, 10 of uh, 16, 82 yards, four TDs, but two big picks. You know, just looking at it for, uh, for at the uh, surface level, it doesn't look like Arizona. You would expect. 
you'd expect Arizona to have the ground game advantage, and yet they haven't been exploiting that as much as I thought. And then I say that, and they just rip off a 10-yard gain. Yep, and that is uh, it seems Lally like they've gotten again. away from running the ball a little bit. Yep, and I think that probably Kevin Guy went in and gave, gave his team an earful, right, in the locker room. Probably said, "Look, you're the class of the league. You're nine and zero, and you're letting these guys hang around." And that's the peril, you know, anything can happen if you let a, an opponent hang around long enough. So I think they're going to come out with the statement of, hey, let's make a statement and put this game away right now and get a two-score cushion. Again, yeah, Arizona averages 63 points a game. They've dropped 91 on San Diego earlier this year back in April. Got 42 in the first half, looking for more here. Powell, and Powell is down shy of the six, but on second and short, he's got another first down. That was a quarterback power play quarterback run from the get-go designed that way followed his lead blocker for for a first down inside of 13 minutes to go here in the third quarter when it was all said and done in the first half Arizona got two big takeaways resulting in two big stops and you get the football to start the third quarter and you know San Diego's been in chasing mode but it's only been down seven for much of the first half now they might be in chasing mode down two scores Powell, and a zone read. He keeps and will tiptoe into the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, I think uh, that was about as easy a score as he's going to have this season. Uh, a product out of Livingston College. He weighs 220 pounds, stands six foot three. That's where I guess I get my Steve McNair. Uh, you know, he's that run pass kind of guy that you want, who doesn't get easily rattled. I mean, he has as much time as he does. He has the kind of night he's having. Second touchdown run of the game for Powell. He didn't have to work as hard this one than he did the first one. Remember the first one was uh, 42 yards on their first drive of the game. San Diego had the opening score at seven nothing, but after the Powell long touchdown run and then the Vircher pick, it has been uh, Arizona out in front and now they're out in front by their widest margin of the night. Two touchdowns at 49-35. Yeah, this is where the game is on the brink of getting out of control for the strike force. I was looking at Jonte, Jonte Berry there and he seemed to be very animated with his teammates. I don't know if he's, if it's the kind of encouragement you want to have or if that's some sort of dissension, but there's a, he's still going after one of his guys there. Hopefully that's, yep. Yeah, well, Berry's just not happy. Strike force are gonna need a score here on their opening drive of the third quarter. Offensively in the first half for San Diego. Scored 35 points, got 10 first downs, ran for 65 yards, passed for 82. So 147 yards of total offense to 178 for Arizona. Camacho about to kick this thing off. Energy's back in the building now here. Uh, that's what happened when you open up the dance can. Robert <laughs> Lewis back, to, or, or uh, excuse me, Marquise Rogers back to receive again. I'll tell you what, when you play special teams in the uh, indoor football league, you get a lot of work, don't you? Yes, you do. You burn a, a lot of calories. Speaking of which, that young lady is carrying about three plates of nachos. <laughs> Nine, oh, no, that's three pizzas, excuse me. And, and to go along with three beers. <laughs> Pizza port was open. Yes, so that's, one that's, of that's a good sign that that's, we're having a big crowd. Yep, Dominique Carson, he better secure that football. He's across the 25 to the 23 of Arizona. Uh, we were walking around the concourse and I mean, T-shirts we both bought. You bought two T-shirts, I bought one. Other people were buying stuff. Pizza port's open, beer's cold. Good Listen, family, and it's Sunday night, right? You get the kids in bed by nine. I've been to now four or five of these games now, four, I believe. The arrow is pointing in the right direction as it relates to attendance and just general quality of play. Some guy with a margarita below us, too, so the mixed drinks flowing, flowing as well. Vircher in the first half, as we'd mentioned, 10 of 16. He misfired at only six passes. Oh, there's a wide open... Freddie Dean, oh, and oh, oh. To Dean, a catch and double coverage for a first down at the Arizona Five. Interesting call there. They, they set that play up in the first half when they sh threw it short in the bubble screen. This time they lined up, did the exact same motion, the exact same play initially, and then they faked the bubble screen, and, they f and Freddie released downfield after faking the initial block, and sure enough, 
He got in between the in between the layers of coverage for the nice game. Dean's first catch of the game. He's the sixth different receiver that Vircher has connected with. And Vircher keeps himself. He's down to the two. The ball comes out. There was a penalty marker prior to the him hitting the ground. The flag is on the goal line of the Rattlers. Usually in this area on a run within the five-yard line to it the is legal on Arizona. defense. Here's Chris Wiggins. Uh, if Illegal defense. This, again, you're going to have to go over the alignment. Number 36 was inside the belt, not the marrying a receiver. Half the distance to the goal. You Replay can line first up on down. the shoulder, but you can't line up. Yeah, I mean, there, there's within the belt is what yeah. it's called. I mean, we're all kind of sort of learning on the fly as yeah. well. Like I said, Fred Willard and uh, <laughs> best best that man's got two left feet. <laughs> first in goal from the two of Arizona, Marrera who caught a touchdown of the first half is to the right of Vircher. Stafford and Rodgers in motion, pitch to Rodgers, and Rodgers is in, touchdown. Well, this is interesting. We were talking to a couple of former Lincoln coaches when we were walking at halftime and around the concourse. What'd they say? Gotta work Dean in, and, and he's gotta catch, and maybe give the ball to number 12 a little more. Which goes to show you why Lincoln's gonna have such a good year this year. Right. Some of their coaches, obviously, can see what's going on. The Hive, they know what they're talking about. The Rodgers with a rushing touchdown. And and okay. Again, I mean, that's a that's a character touchdown. You should, should, I guess if I'm Burt Grossman, I'm thinking, okay, my guys aren't, they're not easily rattled and they don't roll over. And I think when you're a young franchise, those are the things you're looking for early on. You can build on that. Lacayo above the rush with a kick. And so it's back to a seven-point game. It's 49-42, Arizona. And the Rattlers are going to get the ball back here. And suddenly, Jonte Berry is a much happier uh, teammate. As, <laughs> as <laughs> words of wisdom were. Yeah, maybe maybe why that's all they needed was someone to... A little inspiration. Well, in the offseason, this team's going to have to try and find a defensive guy that can get the ball away. You know, they... they they don't have too many takeaways, uh, the strike force. And I mean, I, I think you look up and down the roster, you're going to have to find guys. I mean, just because you played the, the outdoor game well does not mean that translates to the indoor game. And conversely, if you're maybe you're not a, a star in the uh, outdoor game, you can be a really effective player because you don't have to be quite as good gifted in the open field because there isn't as much open yep. field. Well, and it's a different game, too. You, you talk to the coaches, and, and they say, like, the outdoor guys, it doesn't always translate quickly. It's a much faster game. Well, you know, uh, I guess the, the uh, equivalent argument, I was talking to, uh, excuse me, I was, talk, I was talking about the San Diego Soccers with the USD soccer coach, the Mighty Quinn, and he was saying that when, he, when outdoor players would come into the indoor soccer game, it would take them 70 practices before they were fully acclimated. I, I'm betting it's probably the same thing here in uh, the Indoor Football League. Lewis. Now that's an effective kickoff. Yep, Lewis now has two defenders in and front of him. And he gets outside and they, yep. can't, they can't. Carter trying to run him down again and now he's finally brought down by Shane Boyle playing in his second game for San Diego. I'm telling you, the, the kick is working. It's the coverage that isn't. They're just not getting down downfield quick enough and then when they can't break down when the, when the return man is making his move. You know, I'm worried this is not game related, but that young lady who just walked by dropped her driver's license right there, and it's going to kill me. How about that security guy? <laughs> we'll try and get him. We want to be fan friendly here and have customer service as well, and we hate to see one of our fans lose the driver's license driver's right there. A lost driver's license right there. All right. Somebody's not going to be able to buy their cocktail. That's right. That's when they'll figure it out. Powell. And oh, did he? Nope. And Powell inside the ten. That might not be a now. Might not. It just might be a, a ten dollar off coupon to uh, <laughs> oh, Lupin and Oh, that wasn't a license. <laughs> well, I, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna feel stupid. I have to pay full price for my <laughs> breakdown. <laughs> oh, eight thirty-seven and counting. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll figure that out shortly. Oh, there we go. Is it a driver's license? Uh, let me see what that oh, is. Oh, that's. <laughs> oh. No. Thank you. 
it turned out to, to Pokemon card. <laughs> turns out, <laughs> what finishes my collection? We get a free hot apple pie. McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> on the way home. Paul oh. goes in for a touchdown. Yep, another yeah. score. Oh yeah. Oh. I'll tell you what. This looks like a glorified scrimmage for the Arizona Rattler offense. A hot knife through butter, Steve, as Powell on the uh, read option play keeps it himself, breaks two tackles. And I'll, I'll tell you what, if he's running three quarter speed, I'd be, I'd be surprised. He just making it look easy. Two touchdown runs for Powell here. They're well in the on their way to get alone. reaching their uh, scoring average. Yep. In fact, yeah. they're going to pad that. I think this tonight. Yeah, two more scores will do it. And remember, they dropped 91 earlier this season on the strike force. They've had a game in which they've scored 81 against Cedar Rapids. The 91 that we talked about. Yeah, read option play. A couple missed tackles. A couple guys out of position. 56. Five, Rodgers to the 10, the 15, the 20, and Merriweather again, been everywhere, stops him shy of midfield. Got to give David Carter a shout out there for a nice lead block. Kept his man contained, allowing the uh, return to get an extra eight, 10 yards there. We talked about six different receivers catching a ball. I don't think Carter has caught a football yet here in this game, so they might have a chance at having a seventh different guy 7.22 and counting. Jihad Vircher. Out of the shotgun. Morera to his right. Little jet sweep, sweep to Carson. Yep. And Merriweather again. And stops it for no gain. Just blowing up every single play is Merriweather. You have those first half stats there? Yeah, yeah I do. I want to look and see no, those Merriweather. Are, those are first uh, oh, quarter. First quarter, okay. Somehow I was trying to get that lady's driver's license back to her. I lost the... <laughs> First Turned out to down. be a, a coupon for the Banana Republic. <laughs> <laughs> 6.45 and counting here in the third. 15 to go on the play clock. 26 yards away from the end zone. They've got it after no gain. Second down and 10. Play, play action, action fake. Yep. Virtue, yep. man open. And oh! oh, my goodness. He can't hang on, and he gets checked over the boards. That is... Defending on him is Alan Chapman, who knocked him into the first row, and we have yet to see there he is. get up. Now he gets up. I guess that would be the contact of the night. Now, did he, did he, speaking of contact, did he lose a contact or did he lose something? He's looking for, what did I, a ring or something? He's okay. And he took a big shot. All Jeff. limbs are working. But he will not stay in the game as uh, Lord knows what he fell on as he was checked over the boards. We hope the fans okay over there too. They always read a warning about watching. Yeah, the, sometimes the nicest seats are the most dangerous ones. Yeah, right? exactly. He, he was checked over the boards by Chapman into, into a 
a group of uh, youngsters over there. Now the San Diego trainer is going to go down. And check out the fan, I think, Yeah, because right? there's actually a, a couple of fans down there with their hands raised to try and get uh, the attention of the in-house folks. We're going to have a, an official's timeout here. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if maybe somebody got cut over there, falling onto the ground. Somebody in the because it looks like the trainer's running back to grab the first aid kit. Yeah, yeah. Somebody needs some ice. I wonder if we can get a replay again and see. Uh... We're going to stop the game for just a minute while we tend to an injured fan. Here we go. Thanks, guys. A cross action, play action. Over and it looks like a couple young ones got, yeah, got landed on. Oh yeah, that youngster right there right. holding the red shirt. Oh, he got got a, right on the side of the the head or his eye. I know what, but he looks tough to me. He's going to be okay. A really good first aid staff here. I'll tell you what, it's painful now, but it's going to be a great story at school tomorrow. Yes, it is. And and Bert Grossman's got over the head coach for the strike force too. Talk to that young man. It looked like he almost wanted to offer up like the red challenge flag of the youngster to maybe put it over his eye to stop any sort of bleeding or anything. You know, legend has it that uh, Phil Mickelson, whenever he hits somebody in the gallery, he always gives them a signed glove, and inside the glove, the patron finds a C note. Ah, nice. Now, I don't know if Bert's that generous. Maybe it was two free tickets for the last home game. Right. And a Pokemon card. Hey, a big uh, shout out to Jay Hyler, a good friend of mine, a former sportscaster who's listening to us from just outside of Dallas, uh, Texas. That's where we're, we're number one in the yeah, we're, 25 we're at, to 56 down there. We're good at that market. Hey, Jay, thanks for tuning in. False start, number 90 offense. Five yard penalty, on, still third down. That's on Zan Jones. I'm trying to think, I don't, I don't think there's arena league football in Texas anymore. You know, there's a couple of different leagues, there's like four different leagues of arena football. I know Austin. The one everyone wants to while. get to is the uh, the the arena football. Yeah. We're, we're really not allowed to say arena, are we? Well, we can when referencing that. What, what <laughs> Arizona used to be in, but it's yeah. condensed now to just northeast where you can travel easier. Catch made by Ridley. He had a touchdown catch in the second quarter. He gains uh, back some of the lost yardage, but it's fourth and long now at the 23-yard line of Arizona. I guess the rules of this game makes uh, coaching a little bit easier because the punter pass decision is kind of taken away exactly. from you, right? Oh, yeah. This, if they weren't down by 14, they might try and settle for the field goal here. But this is a makeable first down. You got Absolutely. enough real estate in front of you. Carson split out wide left, three receivers right, including two in motion. Vercher and well, Carson fell, fell down. down. Yep. He was targeting Carson, and they're going to turn the ball over on down. So now that's three stops to zero for Arizona. I mean, the Arizona defensive philosophy is really simple. They're betting that their uh, pass rusher, Ricky Wyatt, is going to get to the quarterback before he can find an open man. And on plays of, of any length, where yep. it takes a second or two, they're, they're winning that yeah. battle of time. And you know, so what if you get beat a few times down yeah. the field? All right, clock rolls, 4.44 to go, quarter number three, 56-42, and now an opportunity to take a three-score lead for the first time in this contest for the Rattlers. Here's where the game could slip away if the uh, if San Diego can't come up with a stop. Bickham's going to rush from the end now. They're going to try and send some pressure at Powell and at least try and bottle him up. He gets rid of it quickly. And the catch is made across from us. And the grab is made by Robert Lewis, who's got a return touchdown in this game. San Diego's defensive philosophy is just the opposite. They were, they're a bend, don't break. They're not put, bringing any heat. Their three-man pass rush is largely ineffective. And they're hoping Arizona's going to make a mistake. I think that's uh, fool's gold tonight. Shane Boyle had that last stop for San Diego. Second down and five now from inside the 23-yard line of San Diego. Powell takes off again. There is a penalty marker as he's run down by Ralph Harvey Jr. Oh. 
Strike Force are saying there was a fumble. I think the whistle had already been blown. Let's see. Strike Force pointing that they have the football again. They need a takeaway. They haven't had too many this year. They haven't had one in the game. There still is that flag resting at the 20. Arizona saying they have the ball. The officials will sort it out here. I think. Oh no, that was that was a legitimate fumble. The ball was definitely free. You just saw it up there on the board. I'm not sure if the folks at home got an opportunity to see it. We'll look at it one more time on the board. Powell was running. Oh, yeah, that is a fumble. Harp. Now, who recovered it? That's the big question. Yeah. Here it is on our, on our broadcast here as he fakes the dive. Powell. Now, watch. It gets knocked out by Harvey. So that ball is out. It looks like Arizona fell on the ball, right? Yeah, does Harvey get it or does Steven um, Garola out of the University of Arizona? The ruling on the field is the runner was down by contact. The holding. Number 94 offense. 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. I don't think this is a challengeable call, to be honest with you. Burt Grossman will probably throw the challenge flag, and then the official will come over and say, look, it's not a, a challengeable call. Not, not the fumble, but that he was down by contact. Let's see. They marched the penalty back to the 20. So they're saying the man who recovered the ball was down by contact. Not the quarterback, right? We're getting a replay over yeah. here on the big screen. I'm thinking that ball is loose. They're saying 56 was down by contact when yeah. he initially had the ball. And then there goes the challenge flag out. And you know, San Diego's bench is excited about this challenge flag going out. They think they saw something that this thing's going to get overturned. And boy, if it does, that, that would be huge. Harvey's making the argument now. Look, I knocked it out. We all understand that, but who, who wound up recovering it? Oh. San Diego's challenging the ruling on the previous play. So now Chris Wiggins will come over to the uh, the scores table here and we'll look at the iPad technology to figure out if there's a good enough look to overturn this call. Well, if it does go the strike force way, it would be their first turnover of the game. And they're probably going to need at least one more before this. Yeah. I mean, if they thought the quarterback was down by contact, then that was just as bad a call as you could make. Here's another angle. There's Harvey. Ball's out now. And I think they're saying 56 is down by contact. Oh, you know what? Harvey pulled it out. Yeah, so. I, there is no video replay of the previous play. Therefore, the ruling on the field stands. Second down, Arizona. San Diego is not charged with a timeout. All right. Well. See, that's my problem with replay in just about every sport we watch. It has to be foolproof. And we know it's not in the NFL. We certainly know it's not in the Major League Baseball. Yep. We can't expect it to be foolproof in the indoor football. <laughs> that's right. The good thing is they made it a little bit quicker, though. That's yeah, good. Yeah, that's... So the penalty stands. The hole backs the ball up to the Arizona 20-yard line, and they now have it second down and 13. The music was playing so loudly here, I could not hear the explanation, so I apologize for that. Powell play oh, action. Uh -oh. The pressure releases. He throws the under route and Lolly with the catch. Bickham finally gets him, but he's going to wind up picking up 17 yards and a first down. Man, I don't understand that strike force pass rush there. He was on his way to the quarterback, stopped, retreated, and then stopped again and went back. Well, that's why you see they have but two sacks all season long. Yeah. They went about five weeks of football without a sack and they have not gotten a sack in this game powell's been super elusive inside of three to go here in the third quarter powell under center down lolly in the backfield and a quick throw to the motion Ooh. man it got tipped and going up was fulham to tip that ball no i'm sorry bickham rather 32 not 52. good play by lonnie bickham see they moved lonnie now to the out to the edge there and he was able to get his mitts on that one now Lonnie comes off, and they put more of a traditional big guy in Shakur Phillip out there on the edge. On the other edge over there is Fulham and Bruce LaPepe, who they signed after a, a chance meeting inside a Mission Valley mall store. 
And to the goal line is Lolly. He's awfully close. See, they haven't marked it yet. And I think they're going to mark him down. It'll be third and goal from just outside the goal line. I would say right now, as long as the defense has been on the field, I think you're starting to see some tired defenders. And suddenly they don't have the, uh, I think the, the will to live is uh, yeah. escaping. And, the, and not winning that challenge. I think yeah. also was very disheartening. Yeah, I mean the wind kind of came out of the yeah. sails, right? They thought, hey, we have this. And they didn't. They're going to line up Lolly on the right, send a man in motion each side. Take the jet sweep, and Powell is in for the third time rushing here in this third quarter. And they are a point away from their average. Yeah, you know what? They're a good football team. <laughs> no, they there's, are. There's no, diff there's no other way you know, to And they it. also have about a 30-year head start, right, well, as a granted. But I'm sure uh, Coach talked to him at halftime and said, hey, uh, let's play like we're an undefeated, undefeated football team, and that's exactly what they've done in the second half. It's been pretty surgical. Yeah, Powell, third rushing touchdown of the quarter. That's his fourth rushing touchdown of the game, and Camacho adds the extra point, and the biggest deficit of the C of the uh, game rather is 21. It's 63-42. And the arena has become noticeably more quiet since uh, halftime. Winners this week in the IFL, uh, Quad City over Cedar Rapids. Tucson got a big win. They're above 500. They're a fellow expansion team like the Strike Force. They wanted Bismarck. Sioux Falls got a ninth win. Nebraska's five and six, but still in the playoff hunt. Iowa won earlier today over Green Bay. They're 10 and one. And Arizona, with 48 seconds to go in quarter number three, has a three score lead as they approach 10 and 0 on the season. You know, just looking at some of the locales of this league, to me, the travel equation, boy, we, we think the San Diego Goals have some uh, long bus rides. Yeah. Well, the league probably needs to add a team in the LA area. Bakersfield, Fresno would help out with the travel. Maybe the, we're hearing whispers about the Bay Area. You know, now that the uh, Raiders are on the move, <laughs> yeah, fill the void. There you go, just like the strike force are doing here in San Diego. 48 seconds to go. It's uh, It's been a disastrous third quarter. The strike force have been outscored 21-7 to in this third quarter. And they trail by 21, their biggest deficit of the night. So what do you do? Do you now try some of, some of the other faces on the squad? Or, or do you still keep playing hard till the bitter end with no, the guys you got? I think you, you still play hard. Maybe you try a few onside kicks, too. You know, try and get back possession. I've, I've seen that strategy when I was working in the AFL. Rodgers. Oh, Rodgers slips down to the 10. All 10 of those yards were based on him. He didn't get a lot of help from the, the, the blockers in front of him. Only one touchdown here in this third quarter for the strike force, and it was a Rodgers TD run that got the strike force to within seven, but 14 unanswered here in the third quarter for Arizona. This likely will be the final play of the third quarter here. We're inside of 30 seconds to go. Vercher. Plenty of time. Oh, man. Poor kid. He's got no one to throw to. Throws it downfield into coverage and throws it into his own bench. Incomplete. Looking for Stafford downfield. But yeah, if you look at that, you had three guys standing around absolutely moving. Again, some of the fight is coming out of the squad right now. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. So the fourth quarter is upcoming here. And uh, boy, one to forget here this third quarter again. Strike force outscored 21 to 7. Thought they had a takeaway that uh, was not ruled a takeaway. And after three quarters of play, this Arizona Rattlers team is right at their average of 63 points a game, which leads the IFL. Do you believe in miracles, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got the ice underneath. Maybe. By the way, the goals will be uh, home. 
the Chicago Wolves. They've stolen home ice back from yes, they have. in the finals of the or the semi, what is it? The, the, it was West, the West, conference West, finals. Conference finals yep. against the Chicago Wolves. That series is not a one game apiece, but game three right here at Pachanga on Wednesday night. And that will guarantee, having won that game, guarantees three more home games for the goals. So right. they'll be here Thursday and then I believe Saturday and Sunday. I'm sure that makes their uh, front office pretty happy. Yep. Right? And the series would conclude with two games in Chicago. That'd be a lot of fun if they could go. I think the four teams left, them in Chicago, uh, Charlotte, and Toronto. So you've got you have bigger markets in the AHL still alive than what, what's going on in the NHL. Yeah, right, right. Point taken. Matt. All right, now ready to start the fourth quarter. Vircher has it. Second down and 10. Pocket holds up. He steps up. Now the rush coming from the middle, and he goes down for the first time. Ball is out, and going to be recovered by Zan Jones. No whistle has blown. Oh my Zan God! Jones. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Zan <laughs> Jones. This could be and touchdown. Fumble oh. return for a touchdown. Zan Jones. That's got to be the IFL play of the week. Um, I think that's the way they drew it up, right? <laughs> Run for your life, drop the ball, and let your heaviest guy take it the length of the field. Folks, there was no whistle. All right, we have to see the replay because that play looked like a couple. The ruling on the field. The best fumble Ruski I've ever seen. Yeah, the fumble was recovered. Arizona. The runner was not touched while he was down. Result of the play is a touchdown. Arizona is challenging the ruling on the field. Is he not down there? No, nope, that's what Kevin... Uh, Chris Wiggins, rather. Now, the Arizona's going to challenge, saying that Vircher was down. Yeah, he had to have been, Look right? at Zan Jones, number 90. Boy, number 90, putting put two hands on the ball. Let's see that again. Now they have a new lead store at the ABC affiliate <laughs> Syracuse <laughs> University tonight, the 6'4", 315-pound orange alum. We know who's going to lead the uh, team in jersey sales on the way out of the building. <laughs> That would be the second consecutive game in which an offensive lineman has scored a touchdown. But hold it. Let's Jackson Dallas fell on one at the goal line in the end zone uh, two, I, a game ago. I think he was touched there, Steve. But what I love about this run is watch big number 90 put two arms and two hands on the ball the final <laughs> 10 yards, just like they <laughs> <laughs> oh. And Zan Jones is now you know out what? being attended to by the uh, EMTs yeah, in the yeah, parking lot. Get the paddles ready. <laughs> I'll uh, tell you what, they missed the last replay call. They should miss this one just to even things out. Yep. This one going a little bit longer. So Vircher was, was being chased down by Baron Poole. And there was no whistle. They did not blow that play dead. And Jones picked the ball up, got up, and ran. Well, the Arizona offense or defense certainly thinks the play was dead. That would be a 49-yard fumble return by my count. And here's Chris Wiggins. This is big. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Thank you. <laughs> yes. The play of the year for the San Diego Strike Force. <laughs> San Jones, 49-yard fumble return for a score. Unbelievable. So what obviously happened there is they don't think he had possession of the ball when he was touched with it. Yep, Bircher, it came out. And yeah, I mean, Jones gets up, nobody touches him. And alertly just kept going. What a play. Coaches always because Arizona play lost the challenge, numbers. they are charged with a timeout. Timeout, Arizona. Rattlers, since they lost the challenge, also lose a timeout. They've got two left. So which means the final minute of the play of uh, the game will only take 20 <laughs> yeah, minutes. Exactly. We might be home in time. For, is there a Game of Thrones today? Yes, the final episode. Oh, see, now that's why yeah. you're getting antsy here next why? to me. I have to find out who sits on the Iron Throne. All right. That's it. That's the series finale series and everything. Finale. It's over. You mean you don't watch the Dragons? Nah, I, oh, jeez. I know. And, how, and you call yourself cultured? And I figure I'm just going to binge watch it one day. I'm not going to hold my breath on when that might be. <laughs> the opening minute of the fourth quarter has been entertaining. 
Lacayo to make it a two-score game. All right, it's respectable. Well, and you you know you get the stop there, so now you're you're down 14, but that was big. in the first half. Oh, that's and what they wanted. All yep. right, there we go. Goes in to the stands and it's coming out. It'll be a, a touchback. And since that's the first time that's happened, it should be at the five yard line. Now the next kick that winds up going in there like that comes out to the 20, but the first one gets set down at the five yard line. But I mean, the play there is it, it takes the return out of the game. Yeah. Cedar Rapids is one of the best return men, and in the one win for San Diego, they, they made it a point of interest to, you know, just kick it out of bounds. It's almost like if you watch rugby, a lot of times when you kick it out of bounds, right, you get possession right there. The other team, it's like a turnover. And Powell oh, underthrows Harrington. Yeah, that, that was worst throw of, the, throw of the game. Second down and 10 now. I'm guessing just by the way that motion was, I think he wanted to pull the ball back and... He was indecisive as to which guy he wanted to throw the ball to. Consequently, he threw it to the ground. <laughs> to the ground. Yeah. Powell, shotgun now, empty backfield. And he's going to keep again, and will get run down from behind. Chasing him was Fulham and Harvey. They get Caldwell Jr. and Harvey. A couple of juniors chasing him down, and Robert Harvey Jr. is slow to get up. He needs, he's coming off. Yeah. This is one of those leagues, too, where you don't want to come off, right? Right, but that, that's just uh, was a cramp there, a calf cramp. That's like Harvey, I think of like Cinderella Man. Remember when he hurts his hand and he's finally got a job at the dock, right? You, you don't want to come off? <laughs> Absolutely. Don't let them know you can, they can live without you. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so this is a, a rare third down opportunity here. Obviously, it's... Yeah, I don't remember them stopping him on any yeah, third yeah. down. They've convert, and they really, quite frankly, haven't got to too many third yeah. downs. We haven't, I haven't seen our stats through three quarters of play. <laughs> yeah. They usually run those down. I'd, I'd love to see how many, how many plays they've actually ran. I mean, they've been doing, they've been real efficient on first and second down. Arizona, Powell gets rid of it quickly, connects for the first down, and has Harrington Cook in coverage, making the stuff. Clock on the move. 12.40 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Again, season high for points uh, for Arizona, 91 and then 81. Well, 81 Looking against Cedar field. Rapids. Yep. Harrington again, and Cook, man, he just lays out Harrington. Knocks down the boards, but Harrington looks at the bench and says, hey, man, I made the catch for a first down. First move down. those chains. That was a classic. High-low route. 
catching that defender either has to go deep with the deep route or defend the shallow route. Often what you do is you split the difference in the easy game, the easy completion. First down and 10 now at the strike force 18 yard line. Powell pitches it right, head of steam for Harrington who was in motion. Cook hits him, Caldwell grabs him from behind, a gain of six. And he comes off limping, or he stays on, but limping. LaPepe will leave, and Zan Jones will come back in now as the nose guard. They've been moving a lot of different guys because Jackson Dallas is not here this week. We expect him to return to the roster next week. Shout out to Jamal Miles. Nice lead block on that toss play for Arizona. There was a nice discussion before the ball game with the coaching staff of, of the strike force talking about how they get a lot of these guys. They try and shave a lot of these big fellas here on the line, right? Get some weight off of them as Arizona's going to spend their second time out and then make them fullbacks at the next level. I'm not sure why Kevin Guy Arizona spend that time out. They're first of the half. But he's, he's going after his team a little bit here. And they're second of the half. 11.04 to go, and the Rattlers will only have one more timeout left. That could be big if, if this is like a two-score game in the final minute. What did we see? We saw three touchdowns in the final minute after the first minute warning in the uh, second quarter. Crowd enjoying the enjoy the music. I have not heard the in-game entertainment here is very. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard this song in six years. The kids still still love it. Oh. All right, one timeout left for Arizona. Facing a second and six. 11.04 to go in the fourth. 63-49, Rettlers. Powell, pocket holds up, firing in zone. He's got another man wide open. How many times has Miles been just wide open, left alone in the end zone? We'll have to see the replay, but again, that's just a mental blunder. Powell likely to throw for four scores and run for four more. You know, Burke Grossman, as a, as a defensive player, really has to be driven crazy by this. Crossing route between two, uh, two uh, defense rattler wide receivers. Two receivers. Again, playground. Running off the defender there. Camacho, the extra point. And back up to a 21-point lead. We'll have to see that again. I don't know if that was Rashad Ridley's guy or not, but there have been several mental coverage breakdowns. Again, working new guys in, it's, it's not an excuse, but a reality as we're entered week number 13 here in the season. Oh, some, one uh, lucky fan is going home with free tickets and a, and a signed football from the strike force. I keep that because a lot of those signatures are going to be different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can return the Pokemon card. Oh, she just left. 10.22 to go, 70 to 49. Yes, the third time this season that Arizona has surpassed 70 points in a game, both times coming at the expense of San Diego, and the third coming at the expense of Cedar Rapids. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that they're going to uh, they're going to flirt with that 90 point effort with 10 minutes to go in this contest. Well. Yeah, if San Diego can put together a drive, I mean, the, I think we'll get from, down to the one-minute warning fairly quickly here, faster than anybody thinks. And Rodgers takes it with his back against the uh, boards there in the back of the end zone and turns it into a 20-plus yard return. Mark, he's a, he's a lot of football player. I mean, uh, he's I the, think their leading receiver, 49 catches. And, you know, if you're a return man in any sport, you, you got to be pretty fearless, and boy, he runs with a band and coming out of the end zone. He's trying to pop it, hit the crease right at the right time, whether there's a crease there or not. 
Armstrong was a little shaken up on the play. Kevin Guy just came out and said, hey, man, get off the field. So Harrington and Armstrong from the return team leave. Vircher has had a nice game. Wasn't the starter at the beginning of the year. Those honors bestowed to Derek Bernard, who's no longer on the roster. Vircher steps up in the pocket, fires downfield. Rodgers has a catch right at the first down marker and then gets wrestled down there by Dexter Reese, who's out of Alabama AM now. Marquis a product out of uh, university, or Southern University. Found his way on the San Diego roster and has quietly become one of their go-to guys. Side of 10 minutes to go. That was a first down catch. Ball's at the 20-yard lot of Arizona. Vircher whispering something to Carson. Sends him from his left out to line up on the line of scrimmage left side. Three men in the... Uh, as receivers oh. right and a pass to the goal. Oh. Rogers just couldn't hang oh, on. Obviously, see that's the jinx you put on a kid when you. <laughs> and Dexter Reese is in coverage there. Boy, Rogers had a sure touchdown right there and couldn't hang on. That'll keep the clock moving. Bircher is a very accurate thrower when given any kind of time. He had a couple targets there. He, he passed up the more open man along the sideline. Yeah, it was Ridley for yeah. number two. Inside of nine minutes to go, here's your boy Dean. He's back in motion. Vircher steps up, now run rolls it, run out. It, run, it, run, it, run it, run it, And will tuck and go, and will be brought down at the 11-yard line. That stop is made by Philip Henry out of South Carolina State. Now see, this is too long of a drive here in the fourth quarter right. for San Diego to try and cut into a 21-point lead. This is it. He's playing right into Arizona's hands here. 8-18 and counting here in the fourth. They fake the dive to Marrera, and Carson, he's got to protect that ball. Picks up the first down, though. He does on third and short. He gets four yards on a first down. Speaking to your point, Arizona is very comfortable letting them dink and dunk, dink and dunk. Yep. I mean, th you know, three more plays is likely to run off another three minutes of this game. If you keep them out of the end zone. You're almost playing more for a respectable final than you are for a chance to win the game. Vircher sends two in motion. Makes a couple of dives, going to take off himself. That doesn't fool anybody. Runs right into the arms of Connor Flagel out of Central Missouri. He was in camp with the Raiders not too long ago. Several layers of misdirection on this play as they fake the motion, fake the cross buck. Quarterback keeper fooled no one. So now we're coming up on seven minutes to go. This drive here almost... Uh, Three and a half minutes. Remember, Strike Force got the football with 10.22 to go following the Miles wide open touchdown catch. Inside of seven minutes to go. Carson split out left, three wide receivers. A little receivers confusion in the right. secondary there. Oh, oh and a uh, throw from Vircher behind Carson. I think the play was over to the other side of the field. They were not in sync right there. Yeah. Carson tried to turn around to get it. It was flung right behind him. All right. That's a big third down. And again, what it take? Three more plays, right? It's going to take three minutes off the clock. This is going swimmingly for Arizona here in the fourth quarter. Coming up on six to go. Time running out for the strike force. Empty backfield for Vircher. Takes the snap. Rush comes. Fires for the Great goal defense line. There, and number it's knocked down. Allen Chapman out of Kansas State. Some time with the Colts. Stafford, the targeted receiver, and a great play. It brings up fourth down with that clock running. That was just a solid defensive play. Yeah, kind of running a, pick, running a pick off the referee here. There's not many guys that can defend Stafford. Yeah. Stafford's been pretty quiet here tonight, too. One of the better receivers, one of the better go-to guys. So it comes down to this play here. 536 and counting. Fourth down play, fourth and goal. 
from the eight yard line. You got to get into the end zone. Vercher, pressure coming up the middle, fires it, catch made. Carson, is he in? He got to the Touchdown. goal line. Touchdown, San Diego. Dominique Carson. Wow, I mean, by the skin of his teeth did he get in. Yeah, that, uh, you know, they talk about yards after contact. Yep. That one yard after contact was important. However, the clock's still running. It doesn't stop until the point after is over. So you want to put the spotlight on Carson. That's great. <laughs> but let's kick this extra point. Carson. Carson. <laughs> He's looking for a fan to give the ball to. That's great. But we could do that after the game. Well, let's hope it doesn't come down to the last 20 seconds of the contest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the drive, when it's all said and done, is going to wind up taking almost six minutes off of the board. That's in the favor of Arizona. Lacayo, money again. The point out there by Frank Esco, Lacayo is good. The scores, Arizona 70, San Diego. 4.35 officially on the clock, so almost a six-minute drive, which is a good thing in the NFL, not so good here on this level. You know, the one good thing about this league is it's good for kids when they learn their multiples of seven. <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> you know, it really is. You'll learn it a lot quicker if you're a fan of the strike. We board. don't need that conjunction junction guy anymore, right? <laughs> Let's have uh, <laughs> Strikey the mascot come out and teach him. <laughs> Rattle the rattler. 4.35 to go. Three timeouts for the strike force. The crowd is sticking around, that's cool. And we thank them for coming, man. It was it was raining today, and I know that it only started to clear about three in the afternoon when they were gonna have a tailgate out front. There was a nice tailgate out front. Like 97.3 was out they there. They showed up, Alt, Alt uh, 94.9 was here, we thank them. And San Diego PD was here recruiting, and there was good food and laser tag, it was a lot of fun. I'm telling you, this is infectious. It's, it's an affordable night out, and it's a wholesome night out. And I think, you know, in this in today's society, you're looking for things like that. And I, I think if the, the strike force are sitting on, just like the soccer's and the goals, you're sitting on something good here. Yep. I mean, yeah, look, we were here, I mean, remember the Riptide in 04, 05, 06, those three years, very successful. Yeah. They had crowds like the goals would have. Games on 1090 and slipping down. On the return is Chapman. I mean, this is a, this is a weeknight crowd for the goals. I mean, this is what they do. I mean, the goals do their best nights on $2 beer night. If you're yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So 4.31 to go, and Arizona really doesn't have to be that aggressive right now. Just keep running those Powell dives, right, and make San Diego stop you here. San Diego can stop the clock three times plus the one-minute warning. But more than anything else, they're going to need to get a takeaway. The clock rolls now at 423 in County. And Arizona's in no hurry to get to the line of scrimmage. No. Still 12 seconds to go on the play clock. And here's Lolly. He's had a nice game running and will gain the first down right at midfield. Cook brings him down along with uh, Fulham. I think the description is he's a downhill runner. It, it looks like it hurts to tackle him. And again, no rush to get up to the line of scrimmage. They're going to melt uh, the play clock. Yeah, the play clock seconds. hasn't even started yet, Paul. And, and we're at home. Yep. Well, the game clock has started. The play clock hasn't. And here's Lolly. Puts his head down, runs into Harvey Jr., and picks up six yards. Every coach is looking for a running back that, with contact, falls forward. He rarely falls backwards. You know, it's funny, it's almost sort of like a gentleman's game. You know like in soccer when the balls, you turn over possession but a guy gets hurt, right? The other team kicks it back to the other team, right? It's almost like in an arena league, everybody just, you get up to the line of scrimmage, you snap it and go, even if you can waste, you know, an extra 25 seconds or so. Or maybe that's just the pace they like to play at, and that's what they're comfortable doing. Powell rolls out across his body, was trying to throw, and... Fulham oh. sends him right over. And, and draws a penalty for doing it. Yep. Fulham was making sure he understood what the front row seats are like. We're trying to get more season ticket holders. And well, that's just an unnecessary blunder. That'll give him the first down and half the distance to the goal line. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, number eight defense. 
Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. All right, that's on Harvey Jr. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Three minutes to go. There's still one more meeting with Arizona, and it's coming in Phoenix on the 15th of June. And then the playoffs start. There'll be two weeks of playoffs and a, a week off, and then the championship will be the weekend of July the 12th. Powell keeps, rolls left. He's already got four rushing touchdowns. He's Make got a five, Steve. Yep. Powell doesn't want to give up the football. Fans saying, give it up to the kid. There was at least one, two, three, uh, there were four less than half, uh, I'd call them half-hearted efforts to uh, tackle him. Clock still runs to 217. Powell with his fourth rushing touchdown of this second half. Remember, he had three in the third quarter. And his first one covered 42 yards. That evened this game up at seven. Well, we said it was going to be a four-score game at the top, top of the broadcast. Well, it, it is showing marked improvement, San Diego. I mean, look, they, they gave up 91 points the first time they faced this team. They're, they're not going to do it here tonight. And they're, it's getting a little bit better each week. You know what? I, I subscribe to the theory there are moral victories. Sure, when you're an expansion team against yeah. a team that had a 30-year head start. Now, if we're in year four and year five and it looks like this, then, then we might have a different yeah. opinion. But. One I mean, 58 to go. We don't know most of the guys on the roster. I think in the locker room they're still saying, hi, I like you. I mean, exactly. Come here, defensive end. My name's George. And of course, you know, in a big market like this, you don't you don't get a chance to to practice inside this arena, right. if at all. So you well, got there's a lot of tenants here, and they're they're down the pecking order as when it comes to arena availability. And then, like even you know, I worked for the LA Kiss that had more money than God, right? Because they're owned by the Kiss, <laughs> and they could never get in the the Honda Center right to practice. So they were always at Whittier College trying to simulate it. Some of the smaller markets, right? You got. Third, maybe to get in the, the number one tenant in their building. Right. I wonder if it's easier to get an arena football stadium built than, <laughs> than it is an outdoor one. We might find out here in San Diego if this thing takes off. Camacho deep kick, and Rodgers lets it go into the second row and back out. You have one young fan there kicking himself for not making the grab. Because the ball was kicked completely the through the end zone yeah. untouched, it will be placed at the 20-yard line. First down. The rule book, the 78-page rule book, and each team has to supply 36 balls per game. So I can afford to throw fewer. Before the game, I was having a little catch and toss. Yeah. I find that ball, the, part, the smaller ball, it's easier to grip, obviously. I think it's a very difficult ball to throw. Maybe it's because you're used to the heavier, yeah. bigger ball. Powell hasn't had any trouble throwing it tonight. No, 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 not at all. Clock winded it's down. It's definitely an easier ball to catch. Looks up here like a like a rugby ball. It actually looks bigger from up here. Vercher, pressure coming up the middle, and another great, great defensive yeah, play there. Their their backs and defensive backs have been great, and that's Chapman again. Remember he had that play right, down near the goal line. Back-to-back on -back series where he's come up big. He's been Time out. Tonight. San and Diego, their Stanford first time out of the half. half. Six catches game clock operator, time. please set the game clock to one minute, 28 really seconds. Stafford number one time. The only thing I would say about that is maybe the ball's a little slow getting there. It's given, you know, yeah. it allows him to close a little bit defensively. Well, when a little more zip on the ball and it gets there before the defense gets if you, if you recall early in the season when Bernard was the quarterback, he was more athletic of the two. He could run and just he had a, issues with turning the football over, throwing interceptions. There was a game where he had back-to-back -back pick sixes. I was there for that one. Yep, put San Diego in a big hole right toward the end of the first half, like one of those holes you can't recover from. And then they switched out. 
Derek left for another league, and Bircher has taken over, and I, I think he's done a great job. Where, where's Derek now? I think he's in the champions indoor football league. Oh, no, you know what it is? You'll get a kick out of this. It's called the CIF. So, yeah, champions <laughs> indoor football. And we're, and so every we're, time we're, I hear the guys talking about <laughs> CIF, I think of you or San Diego, and they're not talking about so, it. So, and where is he living, or what team? I think it's in Florida. But, he, he, you know, it's been about six weeks, so he's might have moved a couple of other times. Yeah. Like we said, there's four leagues that I'm aware of. Uh, they got to try and get, get off Dean field, off and, the... Uh, I had to call a timeout. Yep. Boy, at that stature, San it's Diego. Easy for him to jump over the Their board. Second charge, timeout of the half. Victor Dean, 6'6, 215 out of Fresno State. He was trying to jump over. They got lined up wrong. Lined up wrong, or did they have one too many guys? Or one too many, yeah. And Taylor Janusser. And, and, and they couldn't get the board, and they couldn't get the door open to the uh, <laughs> bench. Somebody's got to get the WD 40 out. <laughs> Memo to maintenance crew. <laughs> Grease. There'll, be a, there'll be a ticket put in tomorrow about that. At the goals will be back here on Wednesday. You better get that door working. The hockey guys have no problem getting up and over. No. Dean did there. He sort of looked like, you know that cat that wants to jump? But it's gotten up there in years. Yeah. But it's like, I don't <laughs> Not know quite sure if we can make the kitchen table. <laughs> exactly. And then it goes viral when he doesn't. That's going to be an offside. Uh, false start, or what do they call it in this league? See what the officials think. Now San Diego's only down to one timeout. So we could have a quick final one minute of this one. Encroachment. Number 93 defense making contact prior right, to the snap. Bang, uh, Arizona Five yard penalty still second down. Cool. Darren Poole has played well in the middle. Troy University, 6'2", 285. Gives up five yards there. Second and five from midfield. Vircher. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Rolls out, three white jerseys no chasing one. him, throws on the run and into the second row. The guy in the gray shirt made the best catch. Now that does not stop the clock, and that's likely to be the final play before the one-minute warning. Bircher's in no hurry to, to get back out there to snap this ball. I have, I have not seen the a no huddle offense. Does that exist in this league? Uh, not really. That was about it right there, right? One-minute warning. The one-minute warning. And the one-minute warning here at Pachanga Arena. Steve Quist, Paul Rudy with you. Thanks for sitting in for the coach. Oh, you what? You know, uh, I was uh, honored that you would think that I asked. It's been a long time since we worked you together. You were the sixth person we called. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if I had caller ID, <laughs> I might not answer. That's right. Family owned and operated Georgia prepared all of their authentic green cuisine. Third down coming out of this one-minute warning. I think everyone's going to go home tonight thoroughly entertained. Yeah, you're not going to say, oh, we didn't get our money's worth. Exactly. And, you know, we got you out of here in about two and a half hours. You know, a lot of these arena games will end three and a half hours, especially some of the ones that are on television, like in the Tucson market or in Iowa, where they, you know, really love their barnstormers. Dean and Carson in motion. Vircher looking for Carson and underthrows him. Merriweather was in the area. They've sort of been out of sync here in this, uh, this fourth quarter. And it's fourth down now. That stops the clock with 50 se 56 seconds to go. Oh, down. <laughs> Somebody made our broadcast. This is the measure of an athlete. When things are lost, how hard do you play? That'd be a moral victory to lose this thing 72-62, you know, by two scores. Really closing the gap. Crossing pattern. Virtue to Rogers. He's got the first down and he gets upended. That's Devin Cockrell out of UTEP with the stuff. Get up on the ball, guys. Let's get up on the ball. I guess now we're gonna see the no huddle, Steve. 
Yes, we are. I think I might have employed that a lot sooner. Forty-five seconds to go. Vercher and oh, a great effort. attempt there. Yep. Well, get up, young man. And we're gonna have uh, as the clock stops. And whoever that was, I can't see exactly who that was, but four trainers are going to come over to help. Let's see the replay if we can. He's still down on the ground, but he is getting up now. Officials time out for injuries. It's Rogers. Yeah, who else? I mean, Rogers is that, you know, 100% effort guy. Looks like he landed on his left knee. Was it was Rogers earlier that went up over the boards, right? And crashed. He's still being the, attended to. Into the front row where that young man was. All right, we'll get a better angle at it here. Well, concern looks all the way around as we're still waiting for him to get up. That is the top offensive threat and special teams threat. Marquise Rogers came into play here in week 13, leading the IFL with 1,597 all-purpose yards. Concerned look on the face of Dean and Stafford. Oh, he's getting up. They may now just... he has to get back over the boards. They may just wind up taking him to the locker room here for the final 40 seconds of this one. The long way, by the way. They just took him down the tunnel. Whatever it is, it's a left knee injury. Second down and 10 upcoming here for the strike force. 40 seconds to go, one timeout left for each team. Strike force are going to drop to 1 and 10, and they'll join Cedar Rapids in last place with three games left, all against teams in the playoff hunt. They still have to play Arizona one more time, and Arizona scored 220 points this season in three meetings. Catch at the 10 yard line, a first down, and that's Julian Stafford. Strike force will be take their last time out, I'm guessing. Well, the clock will stop here momentarily to move the chains. And they don't even have to move Diego, the chains. Diego, it's their third the and final right time out oh, of the you're half. You're right, they did take the time out. You know, that, just going back to that injury, that, that could hurt more than the, the loss of the game. You expect to lose the game. You just don't want to lose one of your top players. Exactly. Because you're, and, and Rodgers, you're losing two players effectively. Yeah, Rodgers is irreplaceable. That's a good point. I mean, what he does, you know, offensively, catching the football, running, and then one of the top return men. You're certainly your top return man on this team. We hope he's okay. And he just sort of exited down the tunnel toward the strike force locker room. We don't have a real good look at it if he was on his, under his own power. It looked to me like he just landed on it funny. But whether that's a bruise or something internal, that's I guess that's what trainers will figure out, right? 77-56, 31 seconds to go in the fourth. By week upcoming for San Diego, then they're back at it to start June, June the 1st at Sioux Falls. Virtue to the end zone, yep. Touchdown, David Carter. He said, where's Carter been all night? Finally scores a touchdown right there. Uh, 27 seconds to go. Now, what does Arizona do when they come out? Do they just run the ball three times? Yeah, most likely. Take a knee? Yeah, probably, probably let the ball bounce into the stands, right? Take it at the five or the 20, wherever it's placed, depending on how it goes out of bounds. Lacayo to make it a two-score game and a little more respectable. You know, you may even want to try an onside, an kick, onside right? kick here. Either way, it looks like you're going to cover in Vegas. <laughs> Caliente, we're not quite oh, to Vegas. Okay. Sorry, I forgot. You gotta, you gotta take the 
south of the border Uber in Caliente. You know, when I was working for the LA Kiss, they just sort of abandoned this kick deep philosophy, and they would onside kick every single time. And they said, why not? Why not? You're going to get the ball at the in good field position anyway. Yeah, and it's a shorter field to defend. Exactly. I, I like that philosophy. So this it takes the big return out of the game. A, yeah. a, a big return is so uh, disheartening to a team. Well, the ball has to go 10 yards. There's only one guy back deep, that's Jamal Miles. Twenty seven seconds to go. All right. Harrington is out there on the hands team. I think they're going to try and angle this thing right at Philip Henry. No, nope, they're going to try. Uh, no, it got it's loose, but I think it hit a strike force player before it went 10 yards. There's no flag though, and it's recovered though by the Rattlers, so it doesn't matter. Lolly covers it up. Well, technically, they don't have to run another offensive no. play, so this should be your final score. But I wonder. Yep, if you take a knee now, there's the ball was illegally ball touched by the line. kicking team at the eight yard line. Arizona will take it there, first down. All right. Oh. Uh, Chris, <laughs> other, other point, first point down. the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, point the wrong way, Chris. So, yeah. illegally touched, that's what I thought it hit somebody's foot. All right. And so, Arizona has it first and goal at the eight. I, I don't think they're going to attempt another touchdown. Powell do the gentleman's thing and take the knee here. Yeah, they'll try one more time. Huh? And close to the goal line. Ball is out. Maybe that's why you don't do that. Out and, and recovered. For a touchdown. And they fall on it for their own touchdown. All right, so someone's going to have to explain to me why you do that. Yeah, uh, the ruling on the field is the ball was fumbled into the end zone, recovered by the offense, touchdown. Touchdown, the challenge flag is out. So it was pitched out to Lolly. He extended out and lost it. There is no challenge on the play. San Diego's out of time. Coach employee, the Nick Saban. They say no challenge. Not sure who recovered that in the corner of the end zone. We can't see that, but. 83 points for the Rattlers. Second most points they've scored this year behind the 91. Maybe there is a line on this we don't know about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 21. That's the lead. 84-63. I mean, you're just going to have to, someone's going to have to explain to me why you run a play there. Right now, they could be uh, already showering. Exactly. 227 points in three games for Arizona against San Diego. Maybe it's that, maybe it's about that. You know, continuing the feel it, feeling uh, of invincibility. But I, I would assume, why, why would you not want the game over? Right. right? I mean, because you're. you're what, 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 you could lose your uh, a running back or a quarterback. Yep. Or a return allows them to have another onside kick that they might get, which might lead to another score to another onside kick. It makes it easier just to take a knee and get out of here. Hey, that's why we're up here and he's down there. That's right. Shane Boyle now with Rodgers out of the game has dropped back deep along with Carson. We have not seen Rodgers return. Camacho to kick this thing off. First return of the game. And the boards fall as he's returning the ball. He 
And out to the 20-yard line with nine seconds left. The uh, return by Boyle playing in his second ever game. Remember the strike force, he was added before the Tucson game two Thursdays ago. All right, nine seconds to go. Now Vircher can take a couple of shots. Strike force, season high in points right here. 63 against Arizona. They've only had trouble scoring against Arizona once. Arizona's going to be 10-0 and keep their lock on the top of the IFL. Vircher just dumps it off. Carson likely the final oh. play of the game. He got knocked down by oh, his Phillip, man. his own guy. Ball comes out. There are triple zeros on the scoreboard, and that's going to be the football game. Rattlers win it 84 to 63. It is the third time this season they've scored 80 or more points, and they do it twice against San Diego. 227 points for the Rattlers against San Diego in three meetings, and there's still one more meeting to go on the final day of the regular season in mid-June in Arizona. Well, Steve, Arizona. I count it. I count it as a moral victory. I do too. They, they look like they belong. Howell was hard to stop, but on the other side, Vircher did a nice job operating the offense. They just needed a, a few less turnovers and a, and a stop here or there, and they were in it. But they were in it for much of the game. Much of the game, and I think everyone in the stands, as you said, goes home thinking, hey, that was an entertainment dollar well spent. Remember, we were tied for the fifth time in the, uh, in the second quarter, and Arizona broke it open in the third quarter. Powell with three rushing touchdowns. In that quarter, he had five rushing touchdowns in the game. He threw for four scores. Now we just have to wait on how severely injured Rodgers is. Yep. And a bye week is coming, and the next time Tucson, or San Diego rather, is in action, will be at Sioux Falls on the first. They'll have three more games left, two of them on the road. The next home game will be Friday, June 7th against Nebraska. So for our terrific crew and Paul Rudy, sports director at KUSI, who I, I thank for coming. Appreciate it. Now to the Game of Thrones. Let's see who we have to bend a knee to. Thank you. Send me some of those selfies if you don't mind. <laughs> All right, I, will, I surely will. All right, I'm Steve Quist for our great crew and, and Paul and everyone here at the Strike Force family. We thank you for watching. We invite you to come out to the final home game on June the 7th. Good night on this Sunday night from San Diego.